Three smoke alarms starting at just $24.97. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. U.S. only. See store for details. Today we're asking people to name their one favorite meal for one from Stouffer's. One favorite? Stouffer's lasagna. But how about the barbecue chicken? Grilled white meat chicken coated with a sweet and tangy sauce with a side of cheesy potatoes topped with crisp bacon. Yes. So that's your one Stouffer's favorite. Oh, but I also like Stouffer's meatloaf. Classic meatloaf with a rich tomato glaze smothered in a savory gravy with a tasty side of... Hey, where are you going? You kidding? The store. Stock up on all your favorite Stouffer's meals for one today. We want to talk right down to that in a language that everybody here can easily understand. And now it's time for the voice. Boy, boy. You don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, stick your head out and yell, Hated by the world! The voice of Ocala with Buddy Martin. You know I don't speak Spanish. In English, please. Look in my The cult of personality I know your anger I know your dreams I've been everything you wanna be Oh, I'm the cult of personality Hello, welcome to a Friday edition of The Voice of Ocala Live from the Gateway Bank on Silver Springs Boulevard It's Community Gazette Day Glad to be with you today, as we are every weekday from 3 to 6. I'm Buddy Martin, the host of the show. Tom Schmitz is out today, um, quote-unquote, working at Bay Hill, covering the uh, Arnie Invitational. And with me instead, there's, of course, Laura Klein, who's always here. And Sean Down Goes Frazier joins us here at the round table. While J.J. is back there putting, pushing the buttons, doing all the work. Yeah, right. <clears throat> Good to have you with us again today. I guess we're all kind of... Listen, can you hear that, right? Hear that noise? Hear it? There was a report last night, yesterday, seriously, of a sonic boom. It really was, truthfully. And I'm going to ask both uh, the top cops when they get here what that was. I think it was the sound of brackets crashing. <laughs> there was a lot of bracket crashing going on today. People on ledges, on bridges, ready to jump, thinking, oh, my gosh. If you had Pittsburgh, by the way, like I did, you're ready to just hang it up. New Mexico, like I did, but Tom had them worse than that. He had them in his final four, I think. Oklahoma State. And stupid NC State, by the way, you got beat today. Uh, you know, you're, 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 you're in trouble. Luckily, so far, I haven't lost any Final Four teams, but I'm telling you, it's crashing all around me. Good news for you SEC fans today. Wisconsin defeated by the Ole Miss Rebels, another 5-12. These things keep going like this. Who knows what may happen. We may have about a bunch of eight and nine seeds in the Final Four. So we'll talk about that today. Just a little bit of advice for you before we go any further. Some, some bracket advice right here from Dr. Buddy. Dr. Buddy's giving a bracket advice today because it involves love. Do not fall in love with your underdogs. Forget about Pitt, New Mexico, Oklahoma State, NC State. It ain't happening. When you fall in love with those teams, you try to, earn, you try to will them through. Guess what? You get murdered. Now, you have to have a system. Listen up to me now. I have to have a system. And it's very simple. I've learned it from my wife, Miss Joni. She's got the system down. She picked Wichita State to beat Pittsburgh. You know why? Because her best friend's in Wichita, okay? She picked Colorado State to win last night. Why? Because our daughter went to Colorado State. Now, that's a system that works for you guys. So from now on, if you need good logic, Miss Joni's available. She'll give you her picks. Coming up on the show a little bit later on, we'll talk about who makes all the money, by the way, in March Madness. Good piece today I read about how much money's made and where the money goes, et cetera, et cetera. And on the program, we'll talk to Lonnie Powell, Executive Vice President and CEO of Florida Third Bear Beers Owners Association. He's really uh, picking things up here in Marion County and the Florida Third Bear Beers. He's uh, going to be with us. Uh, we've had Lonnie on once before. Interesting guy. He's, uh, he, he loves the track. He loves horses. Uh, he's done it all, from running racetracks and now to working as the directing the overall efforts of the Thor of Thoroughbred Beaters and Owners here. So we'll talk to him. Ask the Cops, presented by Daniel L. Hightower, attorney. Thank you for them, for Daniel Hightower. Sponsoring the program makes it possible. Both the Sheriff, Chris Blair, and the Chief of Police, Greg Graham, will be here today at 4, as they always are, and they will be available for your questions at 
So if you want to ask a question, there's been a lot of news last couple of days about what's happened here, including some high-profile apprehensions and arrests by our local cops. Well, call the number, 622-9622, at 430, and either Sean or J.J. will answer and immediately give you a uh, background check. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <clears throat> so I'll, with that, I'll say hello, welcome to Laura, and welcome to Sean. Hello, guys. How are you? Laura? Doing well. Excellent. Good to see you back, Laura. You have a little, a little spring break there? Uh, my spring break started about 15 minutes ago. Oh, you're on spring break. Yes. And you're working. I am. i got to come my to work. Goodness. Well, good for well, you. That's good. I love the pink shoes, by Thank the way. Thank you. I, it, they, they're after your red shoes that I you know. wear sometimes. I should have worn my red shoes. You should have. Like we would have matched. I like, we we would have. Next time, call me and I'll wear my red okay, shoes. Okay, perfect. And now, just so we know, you're doing the high school show today. Yes. You and Josh? Yes. And we'll what's our topic? Uh, baseball. We're in the well. middle of the season, and we actually have some track and field news. Really? So that should be interesting. Is it track or field? Oh, it's track and field. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, and Sean Frakes. Let me just say a word about Sean. Sean's a nose member of our cast. He's been with us three weeks, is it? Almost a month, yeah. Is it really? Almost uh, a month. You don't see a lot of his work. Or you, you hear it, but you don't know it. Sean's done a terrific job on some production things, especially on our on social media. Laura, he's all over it on the Facebook page, the Twitter. Uh, he's got, I already went on today and looked at all the recordings, the things he's done that, that he uh, has up on our Facebook page. I've, in fact, shared them with other people. I took the one today down that you did on Brad Rogers, and I sent it out on LinkedIn. I sent it out all over. So that really makes it better because our show expands that way through social media. So, Nice job. I want to say thank to you, you publicly, you Sean, for a really good job. Appreciate it. J.J., same old stuff. I can't give him any praise. He just sits back there <laughs> watching soccer and punching the – no, J.J.'s on his game, too. So we'll have some fun here today uh, and on the program, and like we always like to do on Community Gazette Day here on our Friday. Hunter Thompson-Turner, well, he's down in Bay Hill today also. He, I think Keith Chartrand might be there. I think about half the staff is down there today. But <laughs> good event. Uh, we'll get some scores from that. And, by the way, let's just get it out there right now. Sean, you said this before publicly, but go ahead and fess up. You're a Buffalo fan. Yes, I am. I am a Buffalo Bills fan. Mm -hmm. And a Sabres fan. And a Sabres fan, mm -hmm. yep. Uh, been my entire life through thick and thin. Greatest quarterback of all time, Jim Kelly. Jim Kelly. Yeah. yeah. Best, Best running back of all time, O.J. I would, I'd go Thurman Thomas. <laughs> all right. Uh, Bruce Smith, best defensive yeah. end in the history. So I, play, so I played his first game against the Broncos. Did you? Yes, I did. Awesome. Yeah. I unfortunately was never able to see him live. Yeah, he was awesome. I remember talking to Dave Studder, one of the linemen, about blocking him. He said, man, that man just isn't there. When you go to hit him, he's gone. You know? Yeah. So, very first game, absolutely. Well, good to have you on the team. Thank and you. Uh, keep up the good work. I will. Uh, Laura will be headed out to school this summer a little bit later on. Uh, about in late August. In August, and you'll be here with us till most of that time. And you're going to Samford. Yes, sir. And... Um, and uh, going to major, hopefully, in marketing, come back and tell us how to do all this stuff. Exactly. Okay. That's the plan. <laughs> all right. That works for me. All right. Sean Frazier, Laura Klein, J.J. LaSalva, Buddy Martin. We're working today. We hope you're having a good day. Check back with us. We'll be back after this time out. We'll tell you a little bit more about who's making all the money in Final Four. Also, about guns. Ba a very sad story about in Georgia. When guns get into the wrong hands, what happens? And also, I'm going to talk to you about a little bit of plagiarism issues, plagiarism and how it's uh, what's happening. I've seen it myself right on the air this week on network television at least twice. People so take copying other people's work and not crediting it. And also, I'll tell you about my trip out to Five Guys today. Oh my goodness, it was so good. <laughs> I was allowed to go because my daughter Laurie went with me. She's my co health coach, and I went to see the Easter Bunny with Alexander. Yeah, went to the to the mall, Paddock Mall, and checked out our new studio out there and. And uh, we, we checked out five guys. So we'll tell you about that next. Stay tuned. All that plus tweets and quotes coming up next. Right here on the Voice of Ocala, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, WOCA, The Source. Every day we hear another story about innovation or about cutting-edge technology taking place right here in Ocala. The power plant. IHMC, Ocala 489. Did you know that important medical research is also being conducted here that may impact hundreds of thousands of people in the country someday? Maybe you've heard the name Renstar, but like so many others, perhaps you didn't realize that Renstar Medical Research is one of the top facilities of its kind anywhere in the U.S. There are important research studies being conducted by a highly qualified team of medical experts at Renstar, impacting decisions of major pharmaceutical companies and bringing new drugs to market. And you can be a part of these studies as so many local 
local people have done and are currently doing. Rinstar has conducted more than 500 studies since its inception and would like to extend the opportunity to you to be a part of these cutting-edge programs. Call 877-629-5800 or 352-629-5800 if you'd like to know more. Rinstar Medical Research, locally owned and operated in beautiful downtown Ocala. Rinstar, seeking tomorrow's answers to the health questions of today. Are you looking for a trustworthy auto care company that won't sell you something you don't need? Look no further than Affordable Auto Air and Care. Affordable Auto Air and Care has serviced Ocala for a decade and is family owned and operated. They offer quality parts at affordable prices and they even include a one year or 12,000 mile warranty on their parts and labor. Their certified technicians work on any type of vehicle, even RVs. They specialize in auto AC, but they also offer oil changes, brake service, filters, tune up shocks, axles, complete auto repair. Affordable Auto Air and Care is located at 1841 Northwest 4th Avenue on the corner of Old Jacksonville Road and 441. Call 352-401-0011 to book an appointment. That's 352-401-0011. Affordable Auto Air and Care. Complete auto repair. Take it from me, Tom Schmitz. I'm a customer. Need a car? Need financing? Need somebody to cut through the red tape and send you rolling down the highway? Prestige Auto Sales is the place to go. Got great credit and just prefer a quality pre-owned car at a fair price from somebody you can trust? Prestige Auto Sales is the place to go. Want to avoid high pressure to feel appreciated and be able to choose from a wide selection of AutoCheck and Carfax certified vehicles? Prestige Auto Sales is the place to go. Prestige Auto Sales in Ocala and Bellevue. Prestige. It's all there in our name. This is Don with ABC Frederick's Appliance. Here's my daughter, Lena. And hey, everybody, it's Lena. You need to come down to ABC Frederick's Appliance on County Road 25, just over the railroad tracks in Bellevue, where you are treated right with the right products like Whirlpool, Maytag, Crosley, and Speed Queen. These are the new ones. Don't forget, we also carry used appliances that we warranty. ABC Frederick's Appliance does repairs, too. Call us at 629-5181. ABC Frederick's Appliance on County Road 25, just over the railroad tracks in Bellevue. It's at 629-5181. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. Married men are more likely to keep up with routine doctor's visits than bachelors. Their cancer was detected earlier, so they were 35% more likely to survive. The longer we commute, the more stress we have in our bodies, the higher our body mass index, and the more strain it puts on our relationships. People learn more effectively when they break up their lessons over several short sessions rather than one long cramming marathon. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. Every day we hear another story about innovation or about cutting-edge technology taking place right here in Ocala. The power plant, IHMC, Ocala 489. Did you know that important medical research is also being conducted here that may impact hundreds of thousands of people in the country someday? Maybe you've heard the name Rinstar, but like so many others, perhaps you didn't realize that Rinstar Medical Research is one of the top facilities of its kind anywhere in the U.S., there are important research studies being conducted by a highly qualified team of medical experts at Renstar, impacting decisions of major pharmaceutical companies and bringing new drugs to market. And you can be a part of these studies, as so many local people have done and are currently doing. Renstar has conducted more than 500 studies since its inception and would like to extend the opportunity to you to be a part of these cutting-edge programs. Call 877-629-5800 or 352-629-5800 if you'd like to know more. Renstar Medical Research, locally owned and operated in beautiful downtown Ocala. Renstar, seeking tomorrow's answers to the health questions of today. Welcome back to the Gateway Bank on Community Gazette Friday. Uh, glad to be with you. By the way, update you on know, the scores as they they come off the ticker, as they say in the old days. Temple leads NC State 54-45 with 7 minutes and 47 seconds to go. We'll keep you up to date on those in case you're driving and can't get to your uh, TVs. You don't get the updates on the radio. Uh, we'll keep you up to date as much as possible. JJ and Sean and Laura, we're all here. So come up at 4 o'clock. It's uh, Ask the Cops. Presented by Daniel L. Hightower, attorney at law. Um, and uh, we'll have some interesting questions today. Both the chief of police and the sheriff had some major arrests this week. One of them, a criminal, wanted internationally. So we'll talk about that coming up with you. Meanwhile, um, you know, for all the people out there that, you know, think I'm like a radical who 
wants to close down the Second Amendment. Of course, I don't. I'm not against owning guns and using guns, whatever, especially shotguns and hunting rifles and, in some cases, uh, you know, uh, um, pistols, certainly if you have a permit. Um, but my issue has always been on this show is that what I'm afraid of is that when you have them around, they get into the wrong hands so often. Now, I know there are guns that aren't registered because they're sold and bought by criminals, and you can't trace that. And that's where a lot of the damage is done. But it seems to me that the, if we're, we're missing the point about when you say guns don't kill people. They do kill people in the wrong hands. And here's a primary example of that. This is a terrible story. Up in Brunswick, Georgia, a mother pushing her one-year-old child in a stroller and a young boy opens up, opens fire on her, kills a one-year-old, ten-year-old, ten-month-old baby, and wounds a mother. Now, where did this kid get this gun from, okay? And he had to get it from somebody that, you know, obviously he had it accessible to kids. And that's the only reason I don't own a gun today, and I'm sorry, I hope the criminals aren't listening, but I, is that I'm afraid of it getting in the wrong hands. I have a five-year-old grandson. I know that kids are curious about guns because my mother owned a gun. She worked for the sheriff's office, and it was accessible. I knew how to handle guns somewhat, but I did sometimes. My mother was away when I was 10 years old, go back and take the gun out of the drawer and look at it and spin it. It wasn't loaded, but how do I know it wasn't loaded? I mean, I look, but the fact is guns are going to get into the hands of the wrong people, and there's a prime example of that. When you have that situation happening like that, um, uh, then that's uh, you know that that's what I worry about. And uh, again, because I had a cousin Sean uh, who was killed by a gun that was in the hands of our other cousins, and they inadvertently put a bullet in a rifle, a Japanese rifle that came home from the war, and they put a twenty-two bullet in it to see if it would fit. And it did, and they clicked it. It went off and shot the cousin through his temple and killed her. So I've, I've, it's happened to me in my life. So I'm not speaking of some person who's a wild-eyed radical, you know. I'm just right. somebody that is concerned about the, the safety of, of children and safety of people like this, a 10-month-old baby who was killed by, uh, was killed by, the, uh, by this kid with a gun. So I'll tell you, I think it breaks my heart. Um, meanwhile, um, uh, I'm going to tell you about Sir Monty Powell's in the house. We'll get to him in just a moment. I want to finish up here with a couple of things. Um, I, I went out to... Uh, see the Easter Bunny today with Alexander and uh, checked him out. i got to tell you, that's a job you wouldn't want to have. I mean, I, I, with the kids all pulling on, asking him questions and what have you, this, that, and the other. In a matter of seconds, I saw a couple of things I can't even talk about. Uh, you see doting parents with their children, and I think that's great if you're parents, but trying to get the baby to smile, it is like a movie or a Saturday Night Live skit, you know? Very I mean, much It's so. just almost like, you know? And you sit there and you kind of laugh at it because you know, we, we all have done it at some point, at least as parents. But, I mean, this goes on for like 10 minutes, you know, ten, and, and they're taking extra pictures and all this sort of stuff. And then at one point, I hate to even describe this, is that while the parents are leaning over, it's a pretty good-sized guy like you and me, and he's got his jeans on, he's leaning over, and you see the plumber's crack thing going on. You know what I'm saying? And then behind me is a woman who walks up, standing there, hacking, who sounds like she's got a whooping cough. Right behind me, I'm thinking, okay, you know, this is a little dicey out to be out here, you know. And I'm thinking, wow. I never knew that going to see these somebody that could be hazardous to your eyesight and your health at the same yes, time. Yes, very much so. But yeah, apparently it can. So anyway, it was topped off by the end of the day of going to Five Guys for a burger, and which was a nice, good thing. And I, I was allowed to go because my daughter is my health coach, and she said we're going to spurge today. So we had a nice little burger, and there's nothing like a great hamburger. Oh, you know, it's yes. just so good, isn't it? I love hamburgers. And you love my, wings from Buffalo. I love and wings. Stuff, I love sandwiches, and yeah, I love hamburgers. Yeah, I understand that. So, but uh, the other thing I want to touch on is plagiarism. And we might even guess, get Lonnie, to, Lonnie knows about writing a little bit, and men and talk about this. In the last week, I've seen two examples at a network level of blatant plagiarism. I know because I saw the same story and used it but accredited the story. The story about probability of odds, I read it on the, on the air here, about what's it like, how, what's the percentage on a number one um, pick getting to the finals of the championship game, with all the stats you have, and how many, you know, if you, if, how many people, to pick a perfect bracket, you need all these things to happen. Right. You know, and it was right off of the Internet, somebody wrote it, 
you know, and we credited. I hope we did. I'm sure we did because I try to credit everybody when I uh, do something. I saw two different broadcasters on TV. One on one on CNN, who does sports really? now, and one on uh, from the Dan Patrick Show. Both take these statistics, read them off, and actually never say where they came from. And in the case of CNN, the anchor say, "Hey, great job, great stuff, great stats." And the guy said, "Well, yeah, we try to help you out a little bit." Like As he if came, he did them, you know. Like he came and up with them himself. Ripped them off, you know, yes. completely ripped them off. Thinking, "Wow!" But I got thinking about this, and uh, and this is a serious problem with the internet right now. It's really a serious problem. We've had it happen all over in my industry when I was managing of the paper. We had to go Google things to see if this phrase happened to be on the internet. Sometimes think, things look just a little too good, a little mm-hmm. too official, you know. Uh, and it's happened, and I had two th- cases happen to me on my books. One of them was by so quote unquote local state writer who took a compar- I took a um, a chapter from an old book I wrote on Spurrier back in the day in the nineties, and I wrote it about Ole Miss traveling to Ole Miss with a team. What it's like, and this person wrote a column as if they had been at the at, at here at Ole Miss, describing everything the same way I described. Of what the pregame was like, wow. and you know, and I thought, well, should I say something to the guy or not? You know, and the worst part was is a nationally known writer who, if I knew it, through, it mentions his name, not Vic Rowley, by the way, um, who wrote a long article on Urban Meyer and took segments of my book on Urban Meyer, and he he couldn't have got it any place else. Because I was in the room with Urban Meyer and asked that question. I was the only person there. And it was the exact same response, word for word. And he wrote it as if he had talked to Urban, and that was his quote. I mean, this guy's a well-known writer. And I called my wow. publisher and said, what's up with this? He said, you know, it's so hard to prove. He says, you better have concrete evidence. Well, pretty much it was evidence to me that the words were exactly the same. And I was the only person yeah. in the room when he said it exactly that way, you know. But it really bothers me that people will open. And look, we've all u- used what's the old saying: "You steal from one is plagiarism; steal from two is research." Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> you know? So uh, anyway, so that's the that's the one thing. That, and I and I hope that you uh, and others will hold me accountable when I give you information that I make sure I say where it came from because we got to do that. We cannot let steal people's original work. And today on the internet, it's all recycled over yes. and over all and over again, time. and rarely. Do we give the sources? So yeah, I'm I'm a big stickler on on making sure that all my sources are cited. Yeah, because I don't want to end up in a courtroom or losing my my job because of something oh, your that I forget. To do. Or your yeah, my credibility because yeah. that ruins pretty much my entire career. Here's a guy who knows about this. He's been around the media a long time. He's uh, he he knows about the, the, the newspapering. He knows about all facets of media. He even knows about social media now. <laughs> I was at, out at, at a, a nice dinner put on by the FTBO the other day, and Lonnie was there and, and hosted Lonnie Powell, who's the executive director and the chief executive, chief executive officer. officer. I have to get those all right. There's a lot of a lot of chiefs and executives. Uh, of, there sure are of the FTBO. <laughs> Lonnie, good to have you, my man. Good to have you. I got to tell you, you guys were on my favorite topic before this when you started talking about burgers and you started. <laughs> oh <laughs> man, I saw you smile. I, I, oh <laughs> man, we could do that all day long, all day long. What's your I'd, favorite burger? You know, um, it's. I, I never had experienced five guys until moving here to Ocala, oh. and I've, I, I have to admit I've been to them twice in about the last month. That's all? Uh, well, that's <laughs> because I just discovered them. Yeah. Um, prior to that, and they, they really rank up their high. Now, in and outs out in the West. They're, oh, they're oh, in oh, California. Oh, yeah, they're they're I know all about them. Arizona, Nevada. Nevada. Yeah, oh, they're absolutely. Great. In terms of your fast food burger, yeah, I don't think it's any better than that. When it comes to a sit-down restaurant burger, I don't. Mm-hmm. I think there's one of these in Orlando. Nothing mm-hmm. around here. Uh, Red Robin burgers, the I've gourmet been, oh, burgers. Never got them. Amazing. Never yeah. has Red Robin been there and had those. Those all would rank. But the In-N-Out might be the number one. I think you know when it comes to just having a real hankering for a burger. Yeah. The In-N-Out with it's the, tough it's, to the, be. the fresh oh. produce, they get them to you. You got three selections to make. You know, and you get the code words animal style, whatever, yeah. you know, you have them, and it's just like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. I was down, every time I go to Arizona or California, even if it's le- just leaving the airport, i got to stop by in and out yeah. at least once, you know. And the worst version, and the one that can get you hooked, is are the uh, greasy uh, crystal burgers. Back in the old days, I have not. They're had awful, those. yeah. But they're yeah. so awful that they're good. There's you know? nothing about a greasy burger, <laughs> yeah. especially back in the day. Oh my goodness! Back in the college late night, nothing like a greasy yeah. burger yeah. And, or a taco time. Oh, milk. oh my <laughs> goodness! Awful. Now my daughter is a health 
None. That's right. She, and, she used to be your coach, huh? She is my coach. But she cut you some slack to go she to did. the Fire Fest. She did. And she lived in L.A. Kind of coach I like. Oh, you can give you a little slack. Okay. She lived in L.A. We used to go to in and out oh. I went to visit her. Religious experience. And I have a T-shirt. I yeah. should have worn it today. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, good to see you. It's not as interesting as talking about horses, but it is fun talking about food, isn't it? Oh, it's always, always. And by the way, on, on, on the whole the whole thing there on plagiarism and, yeah. and, and a lot what of things to do with the that? Internet, I just think it, it, the lack of accountability yeah. these days and, and, and sometimes just the lack of dignity. Uh, and what it's, what's amazing to me is, as a writer, you seem to be less protected than perhaps the musicians are. I mean, the musicians will go to court, right. and musicians will win cases oftentimes on this. Uh, you know, is it Vanilla Ice's song, or was it David Bowie and, and mm-hmm. Queen? You yeah. know, George Harrison lost a huge lawsuit way, mm-hmm. way, way back Because he somewhere in his mind had a tune that he- Right, you know, he and, and, got it from. exactly, and, and I think that's just as tough. Pretty to prove. vague, isn't it? it I is. mean, that's a, I mean, I got tunes in my mind that maybe I think I had thought of, but yeah. probably heard somewhere. You know, right? And I and I was gonna I was gonna go ahead and and I was gonna really support you on what you were having to say, but then I just thought I just heard that same thing from another person yesterday. <laughs> so you know, nice. I think you might have picked it up. Was from it word for word? Exactly. It's kind of just like you, for God's nice. sake. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, and he's got a sense of humor too. On top of that, uh, you gotta yeah. have. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta exactly. The horse business, you gotta have a sense of humor. Well, you, uh, my favorite horse farm joke is the one, it's the old cliche. Now, how do you make a million dollars in the horse business? Spend ten million, you <laughs> make a million, right? Right. You know, oh, so. yeah, absolutely. Or, or when I used to be in the advising business, people wanted to build racetracks and say, take all your money, lay it all out on the table, take a photo of it, because that's the last time you're ever going to see it. <laughs> you know, but you have a lot of fun. We we loved having you the other night. Too, oh, that was great. Way. That was awesome. I loved that. I had yeah. to leave out of there just before it was over because I had a commitment I had to make. But uh, nice it was place a, out there. Never, yeah, never been really, out that, I mean, that part I, of town I'd before. never been there before yeah. myself. It was really yeah. nice. Really nice. It's really called nice. the Circle Square Culture Center. I believe right. it's called, right? Right. Out there on... Uh, up there by the Cal- ranch. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, very, very nice facility. Uh, we had, uh, as you know, about 350, 400 people there. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, how about Bob Baffert getting up and saying what he said? Hey, and Dale Romans. Uh, yeah. I mean, when they say that the, the you know they've they've campaigned all over the world, all over the country, but Florida breads are the best, and yeah. racing in Florida is the best. I mean, that was worth the price of admission for me, right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. All right, hold on one second. I got to do my obligatory tweets and quotes. We're going to break. Come back. We're going to talk all about the horses. Buddy. Sounds right. good. Good to have you here. Nice being here, Lonnie Powell. All right, here we go. JJ, fire up that music. Let me know when you're started. We'll give our tweets and quotes of the day. We've got a jam packed day. We've got Lonnie Powell. And we also got Ask the Cops coming up at four. All right, ready to go, JJ? Yeah. All right, number one. I've experienced many terrible things in my life, a few of which actually happened. Mark Twain. <laughs> number two. You should never want to be perfect. He who is perfect can never get any better. From Ashley ML, whoever that is, but notice I did credit. All right. <laughs> and finally, I don't have any credit for this other than some website and just, just quotes. That's all it is on Twitter. So it says, and I like this a lot. Don't raise your voice. Improve your argument. I can follow that one. That's yeah. a good. One. We'll take a break. We're at the Community Gazette Day at Gateway Bank. Lonnie Powell's our special guest. We'll get back and talk horses and horse business and horse sense and all that stuff with him after this timeout on the Voice of Ocala, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM. WOCA, the source. Hi, this is Buddy Martin. If you have an award or a trophy in your house, there's more than a good chance it came from BJ Trophies Gifts and Awards. At BJ Trophies, Floyd Hershberger and his staff have a lot more than just trophies. Among the items they specialize in are donor recognition walls and trees, personalized or engraved gifts, cast bronze dedication plaques, wide format digital printing with posters, banners, and signs, and promotional products. Floyd is the official trophy and awards maker for the Voice of Ocala radio show and is North Central Florida's leader in custom recognition programs, corporate awards, industrial engraving, unique gifts, and advertising specialties. When Angie Lewis went shopping for something to award to the winners of her State Farm Good Neighbor Award, she shopped first at BJ Trophies Awards and Gifts. Check them out at 1735 Northeast Jacksonville Road on North Magnolia's Miracle Mile or call them today at 352-732-2249. BJ Trophies Awards and Gifts. Trophies is just our middle name. Hi, this is Buddy Martin. I want to tell you about a conversation I had recently with General Manager Pat Murray on the great family atmosphere at Country Club of Ocala. It's a family-first club. Um, again, we, you know, we we 
we have any number of different types of memberships, but obviously the, the, the one that attracts the greatest level of interest is our family. And the reason for that is we have a little bit of something for everybody. I mean, we have we obviously have a world-class golf course. Um, we have uh, seven tennis courts here for all levels of uh, tennis players. We have a junior Olympic-sized swimming pool. We have the uh, we have a fitness center that's that's second to none. And we have state-of-the-art equipment in our fitness center. Country Club of Ocala, where the facilities are all a family would ever need. For more information, call today at 352-237-6644. That's 352-237-6644. Country Club of Ocala, proud sponsor of Monday's Gator Report and Gator Talk Thursday right here on The Source. If you add zero plus zero plus zero, it adds up to what? Zero. For a limited time, you can drive a new 2013 Ford Fiesta, Focus, Fusion, Edge, Escape, or Explorer with zero down, zero do it signing, and zero first month payment. But if you're one who might need a little more influence, how about we include another zero? A three year, 45,000 mile complimentary basic maintenance plan. That's just the way we roll at Ford Lincoln of Ocala. It's the power of 4G. Great brands at great prices with great service from great people. You can miss out on a lot of things in life, but whatever you do, be sure not to miss this extraordinary opportunity to drive a new Ford with zero down, zero do it signing, zero first month payment, and no charge three year basic maintenance during Ford Lincoln of Ocala's sign and ride event. Browse our inventory from the comfort of your home at FordofOcala.com, but you're still going to have to come in. You see, it's called a sign and ride event. See dealer for details. Hey, Larry, nice haircut. Oh, thanks, Robin. Looks like you had something different done, too. Yes, I did. Thanks for noticing. I went to Lupe at Merle Norman on the Boulevard for a fresh cut, some summer highlights, and a facial. No kidding. That's who I go to. I didn't know she did all that. She does coloring, waxing, styling, updos, microderms, and she does it all for prices that won't break the bank. Sounds like you can take the whole family there. As a matter of fact, I do. Hi, this is Lupe. Let me be your personal stylist. To set up your appointment, call me today, 426-1229. Right now, somewhere in the world, there is a bear waking up from a long winter's hibernation. <laughs> Scientists are not 100% sure how a bear knows winter is over, but I think I may have an explanation. Here it is. Spring comes to Florida first, so Florida gardeners get that spring fever first and head over to Kenny's Place Nursery. They go to Kenny's Place for gazanias and patients, geraniums and begonias, all for 99 cents each. They also head to Kenny's Place Nursery for pansies, selling for four for a dollar. Now. That is a honey of a deal. Well, the thought of the honey reminds those gardeners of the special role pollinators, like bees, have in the garden. Now, every bear knows that where there are bees, there is honey. So, their noses wiggle, their ears twitch, and boom, the bear wakes up. And all because of a great sale at Kenny's Place Nursery. Who knew? Kenny's Place Nursery is located at 7677 Southeast 41st Court in Ocala. Give them a call at 867-1213. It's a honey of a deal at Kenny's Place. Welcome back to the Voice of Ocala. It's Community Gazette Day here at the Gateway Bank. Every Friday it is. Tom Ingram invites us out. We're glad to be here with you. Um, in our, uh, I don't know if this is called the Rotunda or what, but it's an art gallery, so to speak. And Pretty classy place. Super, isn't it, Lonnie? Yeah. Lonnie Powell's our yeah. guest. And they do some great things here. They always use this room for benefits and for, you know, for art shows, what have you, and uh, it's kind of neat that the bank will do something like this. I yeah. mean, most banks, you you know, you walk into, they look like you're Willie Sutton when you walk into uh, them. I feel give like you you're an art museum here or something that's like what that. It, that. That's yeah. perfect. Yeah. They do a terrific job. Hey, did you notice in tribute to you? I got my, my buddy. You know what? They're looking my glass great. You they're like those, huh? Great. Yeah, I mean, getting close. Let's have a neutral opinion. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Those are pretty close. Yeah? You yeah, like them? You got the little, you got little, the little heavier, little heavier yeah. rim. I got yeah. little, they call them fades, I guess. Yeah. They're good. Fades. They're good. But yeah, they're I'm getting there, huh? Yeah. My slick. father, my late yeah. father had glasses like this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you notice how they're hip now. I mean, when I, I remember when I first got my pair of glasses, you were supposed to be invisible. They were right. Now it's the frame. Oh, yeah. It's all about the frame. Frames are big. Randy Jackson even wears them on now on, uh, oh, on yeah, the American definitely. Idol. And and his effects are very similar to yours. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the thing is, my dad had them, and his, those were his logo. Uh -huh. He had a company called Info Inc., a side company, and his, that was his uh, logo and his return address on his envelope. Well, you still kind of, did I say on your business card or something like that? Don't you have the glasses? I have my face in the glasses. Yeah. That's tribute to my father. Yeah, yeah. Well, good Absolutely. for you. Yeah. And, and, so. It's cool paying tribute to dads. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. I, think, I think of my dad every day. What did he do? Yeah. He was a jockey. 
I he, think you told me that. Yeah, he. Uh, you were on the track from a, from the time I was born. Wow. I mean, he rode for he rode for twenty five years. He started out. He left school. Uh, this is in California. He he left junior high school at fourteen, and uh, went across went across the, the border into Mexico. I uh, started riding at Caliente. Where I, this is the, during the same era as uh, just a few. Just uh, this would be a few years uh, after the Sea Biscuit uh, mm-hmm. years, and yeah. uh, and uh, wow. um, got broke his maiden mm-hmm. in California in in, uh, in Caliente down in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, shipped back across the border as a 15 year old kid, and won his first race at Santa Anita wow. as a bug boy. As a bug boy. Well, a For those who don't know what a bug yeah. boy is, yeah. people accuse me all the time. Well, you guys don't talk over my head. <laughs> A bug boy is a guy who who actually is a train is a is a trainer. Yeah, rides an, a, an apprentice rider. Apprentice yeah, yeah. And, okay. and and so they're looked upon as being inexperienced, and they and they get to pack less weight. What that means is they get to ride at a lighter weight if they can make that weight, which mm-hmm. theoretically should help the horse go mm-hmm. faster. Why are they called a bug boy? Um, because in the in the racing program, when you look at the weight by the the. The, the weight the horse is carrying, which is like 115 by the name of the horse in your racing program, there'd be a little asterisk, which they'd call a bug, which would denote that you had one of these apprentice jockeys oh, okay. on board. So he that won on sense. a long shot and became known as a long shot rider and made most of his career in uh, in Southern California. You remember the name of the horse? I do, I do oh, not. Well, I like but it's a that. trivial question down in Southern California. Really? There's still some guys there that actually were there for that race. Yeah. That remembers. Wow. You need he, to find that out. He rode primarily down in Southern California, mm-hmm. and then we shipped up. My first exposure to Florida was when I was about six years old. He shipped out with a prominent owner and raced at Hialeah, mm-hmm. and we lived uh, right next to Hialeah Racetrack right. back during its heyday. Yeah. And uh, little did I know I'd be coming out here for good someday. I like that. But, yeah, he did that for 25 years, and then they have a, it's almost like a union, it's called the Jockeys Guild, and he was the manager of that for another 25 years. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, road, road a hard life, man. Mm-hmm. Jockeys run, run a hard life. Tough. Uh, tough life, uh, reduced most mm-hmm. of his life. He made, weighed 98 pounds when I was born. Uh, spent a lot of time in what they call the hot box, the sauna. Mm-hmm. Um, tough on jockey. Very tough. Uh, didn't keep down a lot of what he ate. Of course, that's not really mm-hmm. tolerated yeah, these days. Right, but they right. called it flipping back yeah. then. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I, I look back, only now can I realize the significance of his contribution to his family and how much mm-hmm. he sacrificed. But he had a lot of fun, don't get me wrong. Yeah, but, but you know, you don't until you get older, realize what your parents were Yeah, and, and, and they really, you know, parents, uh, for any of, the, any of the kids that happen to be out there listening, I know it sounds like a bunch of old guys just talking, but seriously. It is, but the older you get, the more you realize what your parents really did to you and what they meant to you. Yeah. And I, I had a conversation today with my daughter, who's older now. This is your coach? This is my coach. Uh-huh. And I said, you know, I didn't do a very good job when I was raising you. I was letting you know how tough it was to earn a buck. Yeah. You know, because she told me one time, Dad, we just thought you were rich. Right. And I put it on my credit card. She didn't know. Yep. I yep. thought, that's the one failing. And she said, well, you did pretty good. And I yeah. said, well, okay, <laughs> but I wish I'd let them know. Not because I want to be a martyr, because right. I don't. You, it's tough to make a living sometimes for a family man. Yeah. You know, it's really hard, and you need to teach your children that. You know, but I think I, that's one of the things that you know. I, looking back now, with value of hindsight, that I wish I would have done more with my kids. It was too. It was awfully late in their life for mm-hmm. them to learn that lesson, and I wish I would have taught that to them early on. Yeah. And I guess the other thing would be, and I think a lot of us with our first kids say this, that we're career-minded dads. Mm-hmm. Is especially my oldest son. Mm-hmm got the least amount of my time because I was out Absolutely. there trying to build that what foundation. What do you do? You want to be with your kids, but you got to earn a living. It's right. It's a tough choice. It, it my really son is. and I had a conversation about this two weeks ago. He has the opportunity to make more money and go on the road, but he has to leave his new baby daughter more time. I said, it is the number one dilemma for all the young sure dads. Is. What do I do? Do I go and earn? Do I stay at home? I can be a Mr. Mom and we can live on beans, or I can go out and earn money, and it's a compromise. It, you know, it, it really is. is, and there's no right or wrong answers. No matter what, you're always going to second-guess yourself. But to everybody out yeah, I think being a parent's the toughest job out there. Mm-hmm. And, no handbooks. Uh, and no handbooks, and get, and they're always your kids, no matter how old they get. I mean, mine now are all in their twenties. Never stop being a dad. You're, you're still you're still a dad. You still think about them. You still worry about them, and, and yet you still kind of consider yourself to be a kid in your yeah. own way. Uh, yeah. It's just it's a it's a exactly it's it, it, it's 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 a, it's an amazing. Well, you were in Miami. What were you in the seventies? That would have been in the late sixties. Uh, yes, perfect because yeah. it leads into the time that I, my wife's from Miami. Mm-hmm. I started going down there in the early sixties because she was from there, and it was such a wonderful town. Yeah, you just can't imagine what Miami was like. It was yeah. so great. My first assignment in the early sixties was I covered the Florida Derby uh, for the Ocala Star Banner. 
I got a free trip to down there, and that was my first story I ever wrote in my life. That was your first Florida professional Derby. get paid for a first writing assignment? First, actually, I was on staff trip uh-huh. earlier. I went down there. I covered it. I didn't know how to write a story. I didn't know how to send it. <laughs> a guy from the Washington uh, Star yeah. taught me how to do that. And that was my first exposure. And it was such a, it's such a glamorous area down there when the, when the racing season is going on, whether you're at Gulfstream or Calder or Hylia. In your case, Hylia was really great in those right. days. Uh, and it's such a beautiful sport, isn't it? Oh yeah, it it, it is, and it's and and and, and now, you know, and the animals are so special, but the people are also just priceless. They are. Uh, no wonder. No wonder some of those great. Have you read ever read Joe Palmer's books? No, I haven't. All right, I've got his book. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be the best. The late Red Smith. Mm-hmm. Okay, you know who he is. Oh yeah, I've got. In fact, I've got a book. I got Red Smith's book as okay. a present from my staff. I haven't started reading it yet, but it's my next read. Okay, I, I knew. I knew Red. Stories. I knew Red. Uh-huh. I once asked him what he thought from the great writers were. He said Joe Palmer, and he wrote a book called This Was Racing, mm-hmm. which is a classic. Which unfortunately I borrowed from a guy thirty years ago. I never gave it back to him. Now he's dead. That's the hell. You know, but happens, uh, but yeah. I mean, the bottom line is. I'll give you this book to read. I think you will love it. Beautifully descriptive writing. I mean, just awesome. Back in the day when there was a premium on writing, mm-hmm. you know, that's the part I miss about it. Hey, do, don't you find that the that premium on writing is unfortunately gone for the mm-hmm. most part these it days? Is. Now it it's is. what uh, factoids you can pull off the web. That's exactly and, it. And, and now I know I'm going to get some people upset, but my big deal is... Just because you're a blogger doesn't make you a journalist. Absolutely right. Now, now journalists can be bloggers. Correct. You are right exactly on the money. This is a debate that goes on and on and on all the time. Exactly right. Now, my great hope is that people like this guy right here, Sean. Sean gets it. He understands what writing's about. He knows how to write as a young man. He's not as young as we think he is, but (laughs) he he, he gets it. He understands it. And there are people out there who can write and write well. The question is, do we really do we really honor and appreciate it and treasure it? No, oh, I, I agree. That's the problem. Do I, I don't I don't think I don't think we we do enough, and yet it's 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 a it's a skill and a quality that's just in diminishing availability out there. By the way, I, I salute you for your commitment to the Thank craft. You. Yes, because there's so many shortcuts these days. And uh, you know, I, 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 we're, we're fortunate there's still people wanting to try to do it right. I still believe in the printed work. I will never, I'll always, I still believe there's a place for it. I know everybody says I'm, oh, I'm, a, I'm a dinosaur and it doesn't work. And I know that print media, the Internet is the way. I've right. worked for Internet service for four years. I know what that's all about. I've been through that hoop. You know, but I'm telling you, the power of the printed word is still nothing like it. Yeah, what do you think of, of, the, of the marriage between the, the two? For, I read my first book via the tablet here just a couple months ago, and it, it was a very strange I think experience. It I think it works. But it is, because your, your word, you still have the printed word, and it's still truly writing. I, yeah. I, 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 I get it. I get it, and I, mm-hmm. and I think, but you know what? Then I went to the bookstore after I got done and got some old-fashioned regular books, yeah. and I still felt good about carrying yeah, that's those okay. things I think around, that's, I think that, But I think there's a do, place. There's no question. It, it works, A yeah. place for that. It doesn't mm-hmm. mean we can't have any printed material. Right. And I'll tell you this. we got about a minute. I've got to go to break, but... Uh, is it? And not only do I, 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 I think it works. I now believe, after an article I read about three weeks ago, that there is that the future of all book writing is there, and I know now how it is done. And my next book will be exactly that. And I have a, already have a manuscript from a woman I'm helping in Colorado. I'm going to put her in this way. I got a way to do it, and they release it a chapter at a time. On Amazon, it's worked beautifully. It's a new concept, a way to mark the book. Is this and a it, teaser? Or what? Man? No. no uh, well, yeah. I mean, it, it is. I've talked about it on the show, but yeah. I mean, it is really, and it is. It has somewhat changed my whole thinking about publishing books. That is the direction I'm going to go now, and I'm going to put other people in that direction because that, believe me, as one who's written seven books, there's a big gap in there between getting a book to market, you know, between getting the publisher and getting paid and all the things that go with it. There are lots of ways to do it. It's like my good friend who says about talk radio. The same thing applies to to, uh, to books. Anybody can do a talk show. The trick is to get paid for it. <laughs> with that note, we'll take a break. We'll come back. We've got Lonnie Powell here with us on uh, Community Gazette Day at the Gateway Bank. Time out. We're back after this on uh, WOCA, The Source. <laughs> Hello, I'm Dawn Lovell, 
lead event designer and owner at Party Time Rentals. Have you ever wondered what it takes to make an event spectacular? Well, look no further. It's what we do every day. Whether you're hosting an intimate dinner for 10 or a gala for thousands, at Party Time Rentals, we find just the right style and elegance to make your event a success. Our extensive inventory of the finest in chandeliers, tents, crystal, china, and specialty items is featured in our fabulous showroom. Stop by and say hello. It's a great way to get ideas for an event and experience for yourself how you can make your party time special. Party Time Rentals, located on Southwest 10th Street, just off Route 200 in Ocala, and off Southwest 34th Street in Gainesville. For more information, call 352-629-8858. That's 352-629-8858. The party begins at party time. Relations got you down. Are you at your wit's end? Does the opposite sex just confuse you? Then I've got the solution for you, Dr. Buddy. Well, let me just tell you what you slugs are doing wrong. Remember, dummy, it's about the chase and the romantic interludes, okay? Now, here's the difference. Instead of dinner and a movie, which seems obsolete these days, uh, they have these, these random phone texts, Facebook posts, instant message, and quote-unquote nine dates. Traditional courtship, which is still what women want, guys. Picking up a telephone, asking someone on a date, maybe even going as far to pick them up in your car, mm-hmm. requires courage, strategic planning, and a considerable investment in ego. So now you know where to tune in to get all your relationship advice. It's the Dr. Buddy Show every Monday on The Voice of Ocala. You can succeed only on 96.3 FM, 1370 AM, The Source. On Mondays, AM Ocala Live, Robin and I will be speaking to Rabbi Yossi Hecht. He's the rabbi of the Chabad Lubavitch Jewish Center of Marion County, speaking about the Jewish holiday of Passover. Open for debate, where both sides of one issue will be debated. And then Carl Zimmer will be on with us. He's an award-winning science essayist and a journalist for National Geographic, Time Magazine, Scientific American, Popular Science, and he's a lecturer at Yale University. And he's coming on to speak about an amazing project to de-extinct some species. It's not just a theory. They've already done it. And then have all of your vehicle questions answered by Matt Gibbs on auto repair with personal care. And then Congressman Richard Nugent will be on the air answering your questions about what's going on in Congress. Selma Zirkelback is a speech pathologist specializing in helping young children with speech, language, and learning disabilities. She's written a book called Stumbling Through the Dark, a husband and wife's final year of life together. All of that plus fun with Joe on Mondays, AM Ocala Live, right here on The Source, WOCA 96.3 FM. 1370 AM. And Clark, we trust. Hi, this is Clark Howard. Join me every weeknight at 6, right here on WOCA 1370, The Source. Call me crazy. Some people say insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. I think insanity is 1,000 single-sided, full-color business cards for 15 bucks, or packing service for 50% off. Call me crazy. <laughs> Green Street Printing, on the corner of Northeast 25th Avenue and 24th Street, 789-6683. That's 789-6683. Look for the yellow signs. Hi, I'm Ernie Sprantz. Join me weekday mornings at 1050 for Report to Consumers. Consumer news you can use from your hometown station. News Talk 1370, WOCA. This is WOCA, News Talk 1370. Welcome back to the Voice of Ocala. Got a couple of minutes to go with Lonnie Powell. Boy, it's been fun with him. Time went fast. We talked so much about hamburgers and stuff. We didn't get, <laughs> we didn't get that's, all. that's what you get for mentioning hamburgers at length. Uh, and then no. writing, forgot uh, to yeah. get into everything. Writing hamburgers. That was, yeah. yeah. We'll have to plan an hour next time. <laughs> uh, let's, let's get down to business. you got a yeah. page full of notes. What's going on Yeah. There? Well, you know, things are really starting to pick up right now on the national racing scene, and, and it kind of starts right here in, uh, in, in Florida. we got the uh, week after this weekend, a week from Saturday, we got the Florida Derby, which, you know, that's close to home. That's at uh, beautiful Gulfstream Racetrack and Casino down in Hollandale. 
and uh, we're going to kind of get a real look at what some of the potential derby hopefuls really look like. I'm one of these guys I don't jump on early. Uh, that's why I'm talking about futures or everything else. I'm not just not much of that, but I I like to watch it start developing, and I think you know yeah I I I think. Uh, this time of the year is just it's the best that way. Between segueing in from March Madness into the Triple Crown hunt, mm-hmm. it's a great time for yeah. sports. You know, I, I just yeah. wish if we could have if we had an NFL football playing at the yeah. same time, I'll I'd be, be in, I'd be in heaven. Yeah, you know what? One of the great <laughs> they call it. That's right. One of the great doubles is, don't you? Leaving from the Final Four on the Sunday, going to Augusta on Monday, and covering back to back these Derby and uh, and uh, 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 March Madness, and then going to. The Masters. Tough to beat. No. Off, awfully, awfully back tough to, to beat. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, you're like the guy, but what you're saying to me is is that you don't like to bet the first round of March Madness. You want to start picking a Sweet 16. Yeah, like, it, exactly. Well, I, like I was just telling some of the folks earlier today, you know, it kind of reminds me of the Kentucky Derby. You never do pick the winner, but after the race you go, oh, wait, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> I'm watching the brackets evolve right now, and I'm going, oh, wait a second. Now, now no, no, yeah. nobody had had Harvard, you know, but otherwise yeah. a lot of this is starting to make some sense. I'm going, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. I, I, I tell you, I think there's some ex- exciting matchups happening. My alma mater, Arizona, um, you know, they, they're they going to have through, to thankfully. Yeah, and, they, and they're going to have to go through Harvard, which I think they yeah. can. Uh, my, my other Wildcats, uh, as we know, they had some really rough times, didn't even get in the big no. dance. Uh, in fact, they didn't even last in NIT. How about the Ole Miss round. representing? Uh, oh hey, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm twelve and a five, man. I'm, I'm loving Ole Miss. I'm telling you, I'm also a real, real fond. Of, you know, I've got a lot of Pac-10 or whatever. It's was yeah. the Pac-82 Pac now or whatever. Now. The heck <laughs> it is. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm like, yeah. an, I'm like an Oregon. I think Oregon's showing a lot of, lot of good stuff. I think they, they got in an easy bracket and got some yeah. easy seating. Um, I, I, I still am hoping for the classics of. See, look, I, you bring me here talking about horses and the last thing in the world I talk about. I'm going to take so much grief from all my people. Uh, take but, a, but, take but, a minute and talk about whatever you want to talk yeah, about. Yeah, well, I, but I, I'm telling you, I would love to see the classic Louisville uh, Indiana matchup. I'm telling you, and I know it's too good to be true. But I think that would just be that would just be stellar. I mean, every TV would be tuned in on that type of deal. Um, that, that's not that I'm wishing anything against the Arizona Cats. Love to see them do it. I, I just love this time of year, and I, and I'm always I think like a lot of folks that you get a kick out of some of the underdogs making their giant slant along the way. So you know you, you throw that out there. I just love this time of year. Plus, I, you get in. Baseball, you got baseball going on, and you got spring training going on. Oh yeah, and everybody's got to win a pennant in the spring. You know how it a- is. Absolutely, Hope the turtle, You know, and you know, you still you're starting to get a little NFL chatter because and you've got deals being made. College and, spring uh, practices, uh, football. Going ab- on. Absolutely, yeah. no. It's it's all it's all good. It's all good. But uh, just get a, a, a quick word in for the horses. I guess uh, one thing I would want to say is uh, uh, Florida, uh, the Florida breeding industry. Uh, did good this past year uh, with the economy and so forth. It was a bit of a decline like the rest of the country, but we're the first state to really be showing signs of growth and coming out of it. We were the only state or province of the top breeding states in the country. That's us, Kentucky, uh, California, New York, you know, those those type of places. The only one to show an increase in full crop. Uh, we're winning more high caliber races, grade ones, which as you know are the national championship level races than we ever have in the history of Florida breads. You were at the dinner the other night Florida breads are, are, are reigning on the national and world scene, and we got some of the top trainers in the world saying, hey, their career is based on Florida breads. We, we, we raised some good here. So i got to get a little plug in for the old home front. Absolutely, and it's good news to know, and everything's on the upswing, and we're glad you're here. I love being here, we're man. Glad, you're, glad <laughs> you came by to do the show with us. Let's do it again, and we'll try to get a little more talk about horses, not too much about hamburgers. And sports writing. Oh, but we got to still talk about some other things, too. <laughs> sure. Oh, yes, absolutely. Come back again, will you? Thank you. Thanks Appreciate for having me, buddy. That, Lonnie. Okay. All right, Lonnie Powell, he's the executive director and CEO and head czar and all that stuff of the FTBOA and joining us here. Stay tuned. Coming up next, we've got the sheriff, Chris Blair, along with the chief, Greg Graham. they got some pretty good news, I think, to tell us about on the crime fund. I'm Buddy Martin. The program is called The Voice of Ocala, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, WOCA. Good story. If you missed last Friday's Community Gazette at Gateway Bank, you missed the first installment of the Ask the Cop show airing every second and fourth Friday from Gateway Bank with your host, Buddy Martin, Chief Greg Graham of Ocala's Police Department, and Sheriff 
Chris Blair of Marion County Sheriff's Office, joined us to talk about what steps they took for a smooth transition once they took over the leadership role of their individual police departments. Give me a 60-second update of what's happened to the Sheriff's Office. Well, you know, you know, my first uh, five weeks in there, you know, the big thing is just looking at the organization and uh, studying it. And uh, we're um, basically looking at a lot of feedback. We're bringing uh, retirees back to the sheriff's office, uh, evaluators, along with some community uh, leaders and business people to actually to go into the sheriff's office, engage with our people there, uh, the employees, to try to get some feedback and uh, so that we can look at the entire organization from a different perspective. And uh, we'll make changes and um, do our organizational structure from that, from that feedback. And, and Greg, hasn't been that long ago you were doing the same thing with your department. Uh, yeah, I've been back a year now. January 15th is a year. And, uh, you know, I truly believe, as does uh, the sheriff, that the people that best know how to run the organization are the people that actually do the work in the organization. That's those men and women that are out there every day uh, answering those calls for service, dealing with the public. So, you know, I did the same thing. I sought a lot of input uh, and engaged uh, the, the men and women that work there. And, you know, we've uh, we made some pretty significant changes and some small changes and they've been part of the process and uh, it's gone really well i tell you i, I can't uh, I'm, I'm so honored to be back in ocala uh but certainly even more honored to to uh, have the opportunity to work and uh, and play with the men and women that uh, belong to the ocala police department join us for ask the cops on the second and fourth friday of every month live from gateway banks community gazette day on the voice of ocala on 1370 a.m 96.3 fm the source Hi, I'm Tom Ingram, CEO of Gateway Bank, inviting you to drop by our main office on Silver Springs Boulevard every Friday from 3 to 6 p.m. for the Community Gazette, a three-hour show focusing on our favorite community to live and work, Ocala, Marion County. Come join us with the voice of Ocala, Buddy Martin, in the new old-fashioned bank radio studio as we discuss a variety of interesting topics on the Community Gazette on WOCA The Source. The sound of the bat cracking, the crowd cheering, the smell of overpriced but tasty hot dogs, the memories that will last a lifetime of your first baseball game with little Johnny. Your team wins. It was a great night until you get home. It's 9 p.m. and your wife says you have no water. We have no water. What do you do? What do you do? Rule number one, don't panic. Remain calm. Okay, that's two rules. We don't have time for jokes, funny man. Okay, think back. On the way home, you heard a radio commercial. Mike Scott Plumbing. If water runs through it, we do it. Eureka. You saved the day. You remembered that Mike Scott Plumbing doesn't charge extra for nights, weekends, or holidays. You are a genius. Hey, Mr. Genius, did you remember the phone number? Of course you did. Remember, you're a genius. 352-237-2888. Because at Mike Scott Plumbing, if water runs through it, we do it. Even if water's not running through it at this particular moment. Mike Scott Plumbing. Right now, somewhere in the world, there is a bear waking up from a long winter's hibernation. (laughs) Scientists are not 100% sure how a bear knows winter is over, but I think I may have an explanation. Here it is. Spring comes to Florida first, so Florida gardeners get that spring fever first and head over to Kenny's Place Nursery. They go to Kenny's Place for gazanias and patients, geraniums and begonias, all for 99 cents each. They also head to Kenny's Place Nursery for pansies, selling for four for a dollar. Now, That is a honey of a deal. Well, the thought of the honey reminds those gardeners of the special role pollinators, like bees, have in the garden. Now, every bear knows that where there are bees, there is honey. So, their noses wiggle, their ears twitch, and boom, the bear wakes up. And all because of a great sale at Kenny's Place Nursery. Who knew? Kenny's Place Nursery is located at 7677 Southeast 41st Court in Ocala. Give them a call at 867-1213. It's a honey of a deal at Kenny's Place. Hey, Matt, I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, Yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we we do that. I need my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that, too. I need a new roof line, a new spoiler, and a new Yep, we can even do that, too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show, too, huh? Well, as a matter of fact, join me every Monday at 10 for auto repair with personal care here on The Source. Of course you do. You're listening to WOCA News Talk 1370, Ocala's source for what's happening in today's hottest up-to-date news and topics.
Getting into a busy travel weekend, this isn't going to help. The FAA is closing 149 air traffic control towers around the country. It's due to federal budget cuts. Most of them will be at smaller airports. High school students in suburban Atlanta school district may be staying home and logging on to their computers. Cobb County schools are more than $80 million in the red, and officials are considering online classes as a way to save money. Well, this might sound like a couch potatoes dream, but some people really are allergic to exercise. Exercise. It's a condition known as EIA, and it can produce a life-threatening reaction in some people, triggering hives, swelling, and even causing the throat to close. EIA is so rare, there are no estimates for the number of people who have it. Well, first it was cheated out of $6,000 in cookie sales. Now the Girl Scouts is dealing with another scam, this time by one of its own. Former leader in Douglasville, Georgia, allegedly stole $10,000 from her troop. This is ABC News. At Advance Auto Parts, we like to win. Who doesn't? Losers, that's who. Everyone wins by saving when they come to Advance. But now, one lucky son of a mama will also win a 2013 Dodge Challenger valued at 56 grand in the Pennzoil Dream Machine giveaway. You can't win if you don't enter, so come to Advance today. You got nothing to lose. Advance Auto Parts. No purchase necessary for sweepstakes, void where prohibited. Visit Pennzoil.com slash challenger for program rules and to enter. Today we're asking people to name their one favorite meal for one from Stouffer's. One favorite? Stouffer's lasagna. But how about the barbecue chicken? Grilled white meat chicken coated with a sweet and tangy sauce with a side of cheesy potatoes topped with crisp bacon. Yes. So that's your one Stouffer's favorite. Oh, but I also like Stouffer's meatloaf. Classic meatloaf with a rich tomato glaze smothered in a savory gravy with a tasty side of... Hey, where are you going? You kidding? The store! Stock up on all your favorite Stouffer's meals for one today. I'm just sick of all the amateur stuff, you know? I mean, like, if I'm paying top dollar, I want a little production value, you know? Like some editing, transition, something, some music. Don't worry, we didn't leave you. He's gone? He's not gone? That's the whole point! He's never gone! Our bosses say we gotta stay. Check out the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. Bow to your sensei. Bow to your sensei! It's time for the second hour of The Voice of Ocala. Hoo-ha! You, you ever come across anything like time travel come on stick around it's free if you win you win if you lose you still win hi welcome to hour two of the program on the voice of ocala it's community gazette day and it's ask the cops time Presented by Daniel L. Hightower, Attorney of Law. And uh, we are thankful for our new sponsor, gentlemen, who just came aboard. And thanks very much to Daniel. Look forward to working with him. Well, it's been a, kind of a busy week, and I know we got lots of news to talk about. First of all, hello, Sheriff. How are you doing today? Doing fantastic. How are you? you got a smile on your face and a twinkle in your eye about something. I'll get to that in a minute. I know something's going on. Uh, and <laughs> in addition to the fact we've got a brand new sponsor, that's great too. Yep, outstanding. And, yeah, and uh, and uh, Chief Greg Graham's in the house, and he's uh, worried about his picks right now. Yeah, he's my my, his picks. my bracket blew up last night. Harvard killed me, and Pitt killed me. So uh, yeah, it's not been a good day for basketball. Well, for I was going to really tease this later on. I said I have this story about the sonic boom, and we've been you know you guys have heard about the sonic boom. I was right. going to say that's the sound of brackets crashing everywhere. <laughs> Exactly. including mine so uh it's uh, <laughs> it's crazy i got a feeling chris didn't get involved in this madness he didn't know what it's like I, i've to... been busy you know <laughs> <laughs> oh no the way to make yeah. us feel good chris <laughs> yeah, you, know, really. you have been busy. I, i've had some real long days you have to and you've also had some good news why don't we just cut right to the chase okay and we'll i want you guys to tell me about what's going on but there's some big news out there right now and uh I'll give you guys a coin flip. Who wants to go first? We got some important things. Sheriff Blair, okay. you got some big news today. Tell us about it. You had it this week. Tell us about that. Well, I think the big news is, you know, uh, a couple of weeks ago we we put in a, a new unit, the uh, fugitive unit, and since that time uh, they actually served 145 warrants, and then they got a uh, a big catch yesterday. Uh, you know, the person from Puerto Rico, he was on the uh, their 10 top most wanted uh, for a triple homicide in Puerto Rico, and he was captured in the Bellevue area and taken into custody. And that that's huge for a lot of reasons, not least of which is a high-powered fugitive was arrested, international criminal, basically, and you get him. But also there's a ripple effect from from him 
uh, who's a, uh, a criminal, and it, was he working in a restaurant here in Marion County or something? Well, yeah, he was employed here, uh, apparently been pl- employed here for about two years. Wow. To think that right there under our nose is this guy, Jose Sotre Perez, right there, 42, and who knew that that was, and this is the thing, you don't know who's out there. I remember during 9-11, when I lived down in Port Charlotte, we found out that some of the people who crimped some of the guys who, Muhammad Atta, trained in the airport in Venice, 35 miles away from us. It was a big headline the next day, evil in our own backyard. So it's here. You never know. You just don't know, do you? Don't know. All right, uh, uh, that's that's a pretty good one, Greg. Yeah, yeah. We uh, this past week we were able to close uh, homicide that we had in 2011 with the arrest of a couple of guys too, which uh, we've been looking for and putting our case together and uh, got some help with the community and uh, with some more witnesses and uh, better statements from people. And we were actually able to close that uh, close that case, bring it to uh, you know bring it to a successful resolution. The family's you know certainly happy about it, and we're thrilled that we were able to do that so. And, and and so tell me more about the case which homicide was it uh it, it was uh it you, happened, were in the, you were in iowa at the time, yeah you? it happened in 2000 later latter yeah. part of 2011 yeah. and uh it happened on the uh the the west side of town and uh, uh guy was shot and killed and uh you know we went worked it were able to make uh, uh an arrest on one of the suspects uh fairly quickly but not the, the actually the trigger guy the trigger man so uh with the rest of these two um you know we were able to get the the trigger man we also this past week it was in the newspaper too uh, had a bank robbery um ended up getting into a uh, chase with him down uh, i-75 speeds uh, up to 140 miles an hour uh, actually one of our motorcycle guys was behind him uh, just goes to show you what a, a brand new uh you know a, actually i call it a granny car was able to outrun one of our motorcycles, and wow. you would think that you know that these cars are can go 150 miles an hour, or bikes can go that fast. But but anyway, the the the, the curious thing about the case with him is we've got him identified. His uh, his name is uh, Cotterman, and he's currently he's not out on bond. He's uh, Kevin Cotterman is his name. He he's been convicted of bank robbery. He's waiting his sentencing on the bank robbery case. And while he's awaiting sentencing, he's out. They, uh, the judge let him out. And uh, he's robbed a bank here in Ocala. And the other day, he robbed a bank in uh, Altamont Springs. So, uh, you know, this, this guy's out there. I'd be surprised if he shows up for his court date, but you never know. You know, so <laughs> we got that going for us. The arrest yeah. is just, uh, you don't want to bet on that one. <laughs> no, you know, it, it, of course, you know, it, 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 people surprise you every day. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's, you know... And, you know, the, the funny thing about this, and not that bank robbery is funny, but the car that uh, that we were chasing, uh, he had rented a- in his own name. Oh and, uh, yeah, I know, I mean, the guy, it's, it's not rocket science here. I mean, it, it, he's not overly bright. But uh, <laughs> but anyway, he's he's out there. I'm sure we'll come across him. And, you know, we've gotten a lot of good uh, tips from the community recently. In fact, we had one the other day where we had a missing female, uh, a female who was missing, and and uh, we put her name picture out in the media and on our website and our Facebook page. And we uh, we got a phone call. Uh, actually, she was spotted in the county, and the sheriff's office went up there and identified her. And so we were able to successfully find her, and she wasn't in any danger at all. So you know, kudos for the community for actually paying attention and, and looking at the news and paying attention to the pictures and giving us a call. It certainly makes our job a whole lot easier. We talk about this a lot. You rely on your community and your community watch programs. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and uh, sometimes you think, well, you know, it's a nuisance to call the sheriff or call the chief, and they got busy. They're busy doing things, you know. And, but the reality, again, from their, their, their another set of eyes and ears, and, and, and you always, you all, both have always told me if it looks suspicious, fold it in, right? Absolutely. Uh, you know, we'd rather run a dead end lead than, than not actually have the information because we need the information. It's just like the, uh, the person yesterday. You know, uh, it was off a tip, so uh, very important. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I know there's also that formula. Uh, the the people at airport security, uh, it's called what's it called the TSA, whatever it's called, it's the, the TSA. Car, TSA. They just recently made a decision, and we'll think about this during, during the break and come back to obviously allow certain kinds of knives on airplanes and 
you first thing you think, how stupid can you be? But then you think about their logic. You're saying, what is the biggest danger to us on an airplane? It's probably not a knife. Right. It's a bomb. Yeah. And the more hours they can spend catching guys with bombs makes us safer, as opposed to that one incident every two years that happens with a knife. Of course we don't want anything on there. But I want you guys to think about that for a second. And then explain to me, when you say to me, well, call us and give us all this information, how much time that takes. So how do you, in fact, deal with that time issue of the smaller things and yet find enough manpower to fight crime? That's just a thought. If you guys reflect on that, we'll take a break. You're listening to Ask the Cops, presented by Daniel L. Hightower, attorney at law. This is the Call of Voices of Ocala on Ask the Cops. We're at the Community Gazette Day in the Gateway Bank. Stay tuned to 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, WOCA, the source. Since 1976, Daniel L. Hightower, lawyer, has been fighting for accident victim justice in North Central Florida and statewide. He believes everyone in America should follow the rules, including the insurance companies. He and his firm have experience fighting for victims of personal injury, wrongful death, workers' compensation, and Social Security disability, as well as serving those in need of help with bankruptcy, simple wills, and estate plans. The mission at the law offices of Daniel L. Hightower, PA, is to represent deserving clients and recover the maximum benefits they are entitled to by law in a timely manner. In personal injury and workers' compensation cases, there are no fees or costs unless the recovery is made. The law office of Daniel L. Hightower is located at 7 East Silver Springs Boulevard, Suite 300. For your free consultation, call 352-629-7777 or 1-888-LAW-1976 and visit danhightower.com for more information. Daniel L. Hightower, PA lawyer, fighting for accident victim justice, the proud sponsor of Ask the Cops. If you need a sign or a banner for your yard or your business or your campaign, I'd recommend you go to Signs Unlimited at 318 South Magnolia in Ocala. Screen printing, embroidery, digital graphics, do what I did when we needed signs for the Save the Marion Theater Group. Go see Vic Buttermore at Signs Unlimited if you want quality work with a fast turnaround from somebody who is deeply committed to his community and always ready to assist you. There's a reason Vic's slogan is, it's our business to make your business better. Sign up for Signs Unlimited. Call 732-7341 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And so is State Farm agent Angie Lewis, working hard to serve her community as a citizen and insurance agent. Angie wants to help you as you adjust your insurance needs to your life. From everything to helping educate your teen driver to protecting your family against everyday risk. She wants to change the way you perceive insurance by developing relationships with their clients, which is why Angie and her staff are proud to be a part of so many good causes in Ocala. In turn, she has chosen to single out those who step up as leaders. Each month on The Voice of Ocala, Angie spotlights a good neighbor, saluting those who give exceptional service or do random acts of kindness to others. For this, Angie was written up in State Farm's National Magazine. Angie also supports local businesses with a regular biz buzz. The Angie Lewis State Farm Agency is located at 1122 Northeast 36th Avenue, where visitors are always welcome and the coffee pot is always on. Call your good neighbor's State Farm agent today, Angie Lewis, at 294 2444. Legally Yours, brought to you by Fuller & Fuller Attorneys at Law. On the air every Wednesday morning at 10.30 a.m. with John Fuller, a board-certified civil trial lawyer for over 25 years. John welcomes your questions from business to complex family matters to legal disputes. So tune in every Wednesday morning at 10.30 a.m. for Legally Yours with John Fuller, right here on WOCA 1370 a.m. and 96.7 FM, The Source. Mark your calendars for Saturday, April 6th for the Francis Marion Military Academy Spring Fling at the Ocala Shrine Club on Mary Camp Road. Join the first annual Swamp Fox Chili Cook-Off and Classic Car Show. Take a chance on winning one of five different late model vehicles for the unbelievably low price of just $20 per ticket. Only 5,000 tickets will be sold. The proceeds benefit the Francis Marion Military Academy. Businesses, organizations, and talented individuals are invited to show off their cooking skills and to compete for the best tasting chili. Go to Swamp Fox of events.com for the registration directions to the Shrine Club Car Show Chili Cook-Off. Join our sponsors in supporting the Academy. Remember that Saturday, April 6th for the Francis Mary Military Academy Spring Fling at the Ocala Shrine Club on Mary Camp Road. The first annual Swamp Fox Chili Cook-Off and Classic Car Show. For more information, call Charlie at 843-7790. That's 843-7790. 843-7790. Or visit swampfoxevents.com. 
Don't ever miss a single edition of the Mike Huckabee Show. We're going to have a whole lot of fun talking to big issues of the day. We'll talk to the newsmakers and the issues that made them a newsmaker, as well as we'll bring you some entertainment, some fun. You never know what's going to happen on the Mike Huckabee Show. Don't miss it. Join Mike Huckabee every weekday from noon to 3 exclusively on WOCA The Source. Welcome back to Ask the Cops, the Sheriff Chris Blair and Chief of Police Greg Graham at Gateway Bank. Uh, this is presented by Daniel L. Hightower, Attorney at Law. Guys, there have been a lot of news about guns and shooting, and I mentioned earlier to you, I think, Sheriff Blair off the air, about the situation up in, in Brunswick where a young mother had a, had a baby out, like a 10-month-old baby in a stroller, and somebody came up and shot the baby and killed the baby and shot her. They think the kid was maybe a teenager and, and just got a hold of a gun and whatever. Uh, it, it's just hard to understand this kind of mentality with, with, with the violence that we got around here, especially when kids got guns, you know? Absolutely. I mean, it's, um, you know, you don't never know these days, you know, and uh, we have people out there, and, and uh, we certainly got to, you know, it's the way that kids are being raised, I think, sometimes, you know, they're not raised with uh, both parents in a home, and, and they hook up with the other ones that are not doing so right. And, you know, just, uh, you know, last week, you know, we had the double homicide at the vacation host in and senseless. I mean, the problem there was that uh, they yelled at some children that were riding a bicycle on the sidewalk. Um, next thing you know, some verbal disagreements and things. And then uh, he comes back armed with a handgun and fires and uh, kills two people. So uh, you just don't never know. That is very frightening and it's also very horrible to know it happened right in the middle of our town, you know. And yet we have this transient aspect of our society today, which is something we have to deal with. And the one that never knows who's what, who's where and what's going on. A lot of people are on hard times. Greg, I to tell you this. You see it every day. And there's some element out there that is of desperation. And crazy things go on like this. And I know that you made a statement, which I will forevermore remember on this show, that your goal is to make Ocala the safest place in the world. And I love that, as that you do that. But it's got to be very frustrating when you have to deal with so many unknowns and some things you just can't protect. Well, you know, I think one of the, the most frustrating things t to me that I've seen over 30 years uh, in law enforcement, and, and the sheriff briefly touched on it, is, you know, the way our society's changed over the years where, you know, human life is uh, has less value to, to people that uh, we have not, as a society, done a good job of of raising our kids. You know, it takes a village to raise a child. Most people now are, you know, they have absentee parents. Uh, you know, um, aunts, uncles, grandmothers, grandfathers don't uh, don't take an, as active of a, of a role in in developing you know a kid's ability to cope with. Uh, with uh, conflict resolution, having respect for each other, um, and it's crazy. I mean, we uh, we worked a shooting one time, not here in Ocala, but we worked a shooting one time where uh, two people were shot because uh, a guy walked past a, a, a table and knocked a donut off, and it hit the person on the leg. Now, I was offended as a police officer that they'd knocked a donut off before. <laughs> but, it Poor donut. but I'm not. But it was a victim. Right. But, <laughs> Very good. <laughs> but, the guy, but the guy that had the donut hit him uh, felt that he was being disrespected, so he shot him. And it's just, uh, you know, it's just kind of crazy that, you know, we can't communicate well with each other. And you look at, I mean, even, you know, in the grand scheme of things, I'm going to make a lot of people mad when I say this, but when you're sitting in a room with your kids, and they won't look at each other and talk. They're texting each other. You know, we had a new low in the Graham household uh, a couple of Christmases ago where they were Skyping each other across the room. It's like, hey, come on, shut the computer off and talk to each other. So I, I, I think as a society, we've got to do a better job of, of te teaching our kids better and then holding each other accountable and not being afraid to interfere and say, you know, I think you're heading down the wrong path and we've got to go because, you know, it's a shame that, you know, you can make a, a, a decision a, that'll in a second that'll change your life forever and uh, some people just don't uh don't see the consequences of their actions you know and it may be because you know video games and violence you know on tv and in the movies or uh, you know there's just so many other things that are going on that i just think uh we've got to do a better job in our society of, of dealing with unfortunately it, it 
you know, people want to blame uh, law enforcement or not blame law enforcement or expect law enforcement to, uh, you know, to control this and to, to make the community safer and to make uh, things better. And the, the reality is it, it's a community effort. And, know, and I think everybody. the other thing, too, that, you know, uh, just like this guy out there at large, you know, he was at large after he shot and killed these two people. So uh, I was activating the teams. Uh, I was on the phone getting our teams out. Uh, very, very concerned with the fact that, you know, he just killed two people. Who else is he going to kill? He's out there at large, and uh, I have to credit uh, one of our deputies. Uh, he got on the computer. He was able to track a, uh, an address, led him to uh, a residence out there in Silver Spring Shores, did an outstanding job, surrounded the house, and we took him into custody. But, uh, you know, that's the reason I built those teams. It's a 30-man unit. Uh, we can activate them quickly. We can get them out and um, do what we need to do. So, uh you know, it's about uh, being ready to go. Well, like even strike force team or something like that. That's well, you know, they they work independent of each other. You know, we got the fugitive squad, we got the tactical investigative team, and I got two property teams. But uh, they're led by two lieutenants and a captain, and, and I can activate 30 people with a phone call and get them out because you got to remember something like that at a motel. We had to try to vacate the motel. Uh, we're thinking he may because he made statements he was coming back, so we had to have most of our units there. Um, so we had to put other people out there, and so they were coming out. Uh, but at the same time, we located the, re the residents and the vehicle, so we had other units respond and take him into custody. So we're preparing ourselves, and we also got to look at career offenders. This week, um, we created a new database for career offenders here in Marion County. We have across, I like that. We have about over 40 uh, plus 40 in here, but um, we're checking them. We're going to check them every. Uh, 30 to 90 days uh, so we know where they're at, what they're doing. Uh, there will be some upcoming arrests, uh, I believe, very soon in the next week or two uh, because that really wasn't a focus. It is a focus to, to me, and it's important that we know where these offenders are. I, you know, and Greg, I, this is the thing the average person doesn't understand, like me, is that, and I know it frustrates you because the court system we deal with sometimes, but the fact is, you think a guy with a rap sheet a mile long, and he goes out and shoots somebody, you think, how in the you-know-what did he get out there and do that? He's a career criminal, and yet I know you guys are just as frustrated, but to the average person, they well, lock him up. It isn't quite that simple, is it? Well, you know, it, just, it goes back to the whole bank robbery guy. You know, he's he's been convicted of bank robbery, and he's not in jail. He's pending sentencing, and, you know, we know for a fact he's done two so far uh, since he's been out. But you know, uh, the sheriff glossed over something. I wanted to uh, I wanted to, to commend one of his deputies. And you know, when you when you talk about having a situational awareness and knowing your community and knowing the people that you're involved in in policing, when when that deputy heard the guy's name that was involved in that shooting, he remembered a call that he went on at not at the guy's house, but at a relative's house. Right. And I mean, that is outstanding police work and I, I don't know who the deputy was but I mean that was one of those things where you want to walk up and you know shake the guy's hand hug him and go thank you very much for paying attention and and remembering no. what stuff like that because you know that's what uh, you know that's certainly is what's going to make us all uh, a lot safer. Hey, that's the part you can't train them for. That that's engagement. The, yeah, well yeah yeah you know and it's and it's and it's truly having a servant's heart and knowing you know, this is this is what I should be doing, and I, I just I was very impressed when I uh, when I heard how he was uh, how he was found. That was that was outstanding law enforcement. And you know, uh, proactive approach. I think that's where we got to be today. I mean, we got to be proactive. And um, you know, I, I was just telling people yesterday. You know, we were going through a policy review, and you cannot measure prevention. Uh, no matter what you do, you cannot measure that. And uh, I think by putting these units out there and um, you know, we had 145 warrants served in the last two weeks. Well, you cannot measure what we prevented. We don't know what we prevented, but I bet you we prevented additional burglaries, thefts, and possibly robberies uh, because we have those people now taken into custody. So um, that is where we need to head, and, and that's the direction I'm heading to uh, keep this community safe. All right, the show's called Ask the Cops, presented by Daniel L. Hightower, Attorney at Law, Sheriff Chris Blair. Chief Greg Graham with us. I want to get to this question for the break, and it, it, we only got a couple of minutes, but I read this, heard this story on CNN today about some people in Georgia. I want to say it was, a, it was the outskirts of Atlanta, north, just north of Atlanta, where the, the, a couple of uh, cops there decided they'd get together. They were dealing with drug busts. They said they were so frustrated they were arresting people that were back on the streets, and he says, finally, they decided, you know what we have to do? Get to the core of the problem. 
they began. They started an organization to actually go out and get these offenders and bring them in and and try to get them to sign a year's commitment to be retrained and teach them how to break this chain and to get off the drug train and to learn to get a job and actually train them. Now, that's a major commitment. That's something that I applaud. I don't know how they did it or how it's going to work out. Let me get your thoughts, starting with you, uh, Chris. What is your thought about something like that? Well, you know, I think, uh, you know, I, I was a robbery uh, detective for many years, and, you know, I think we, we both will agree that uh, drug drives crime. Uh, the drugs drive it, and uh, we have it in this community, and I think that the ones we arrest out there are addicted to drugs, pills, things of that nature. So, uh, What percentage yeah. of people you arrest are on drugs or have associated with drugs? Yeah, rough, I, I rough think rough. when you're talking violent crimes and things of that nature, the robberies and things, you know, you, you're probably in the, in the high 80s, wow. 90%, I'd say, bracket there. And, uh, and yeah, it is the root. I think somehow, you know, and I, I wish them all the luck with that program, and certainly we may need to look at that if it's successful because uh, that's where we have to go. we got to get the people off the, the drugs and and certainly they won't be out there reoffending. Uh, Greg? We actually have a program like that. It's called okay. the Drug Market in, uh, Initiative here in Ocala. See, I didn't know that now. It's something new. Well, it's, uh, you know, we're not as big as the jurisdiction that, that did it. actually did a big, uh, it was a 60-minute or dateline right. thing on them the other night. Um, you know, when we, in ours, and it's still up and operational, uh, in ours there's criteria to even enter into the program. It's got to be a first offender. You go out and buy drugs from someone, and it's the first time they've ever done it. Um, and there's very few of those people out there that we're catching that are first-time offenders. Usually the people we catch are multiple offenders, and they're not eligible for the program because, you know, they're they're not eligible. So we we do that, and it and we've had some success with it, but uh, like I said, we're you know as small as we are compared to the bigger cities. It's uh, you know it it does take an inordinate amount of time and a lot of resources, not just from uh, the department but from the community to do that. But you know when when somebody when we when we buy drugs from uh, someone who fits that criteria, uh, we put them in the program. I'll talk to you about undercover operations as much as you can tell us, uh, too. We've got to open the lines up right now for our folks out there. It's 622 If you'd like to ask Sheriff Chris Blair or you'd like to ask Chief Greg Graham a question, we have some people who sent questions on the Internet. You can call uh, up Sean, and he's waiting by the phone right now for you if you'd like to ask a question. We'll take a break. We'll return to Ask the Cops, presented by Daniel L. Hightower, attorney at law. You're listening to... WCA, this is the Voice of Ocala, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM. Hi, this is Buddy Martin. If you have an award or a trophy in your house, there's more than a good chance it came from BJ Trophies Gifts and Awards. At BJ Trophies, Floyd Hershberger and his staff have a lot more than just trophies. Among the items they specialize in are donor recognition walls and trees, personalized or engraved gifts, cast bronze dedication plaques, wide format digital printing with posters, banners, and signs, and promotional products. Floyd is the official trophy and awards maker for the Voice of Ocala radio show and is North Central Florida's leader in custom recognition programs, corporate awards, industrial engraving, unique gifts, and advertising specialties. When Angie Lewis went shopping for something to award to the winners of her State Farm Good Neighbor Award, she shopped first at BJ Trophies Awards and Gifts. Check them out at 1735 Northeast Jacksonville Road on North Magnolia's Miracle Mile or call them today at 352-732-2249. BJ Trophies Awards and Gifts. Trophies is just our middle name. Recently, I had a great conversation with General Manager Pat Murray on the special events at Country Club of Ocala. We have a lot of uh, events, special events here that are that are geared towards the family. Uh, Easter comes to mind. We have uh, an Easter bunny who pops around on the driving range. At, we usually hide somewhere in a neighborhood of 3,000 eggs and, 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 and turn them loose and let them go harvest the eggs. We have a great family celebration here on the 4th of July where it's, it's a traditional cookout, if you will. And as the, as the sun goes down, the driving range becomes alive with uh, probably one of the better fireworks displays in the, in the area. Uh, breakfast with Santa is a, big, is a big deal. Country Club of Ocala, where the Easter Bunny, Santa, and all the children, large and small, are a big deal on every special occasion. For more information, call 352-237-6644. That's 352-237-6644. Country Club of Ocala, proud sponsor of the Bundy Gator Report, right here on The Source. Hey, Lance. Hey, Lance. 
Yes, George. Do you know I'm a truck driver now? What? I called Devin Self Storage at 8730777 and John and Mike now have a moving truck. Are you cleaning out the garage? Well, I do have time because Devin Self Storage is open late and they're right across from Hobby Lobby on 200. You better call them first and reserve the truck. Why? So I'll know when there's room for the car. Yes, Alice, yes. On Mondays, AML Keller Live, Robin and I will be speaking to Rabbi Yossi Hektis, the rabbi of the Chabad Lubavitch Jewish Center of Marion County, speaking about the Jewish holiday of Passover. Open for debate, where both sides of one issue will be debated. And then Carl Zimmer will be on with us. He's an award-winning science essayist and a journalist for National Geographic, Time Magazine, Scientific American, Popular Science, and he's a lecturer at Yale University. And he's coming on to speak about an amazing project to de-extinct some species. It's not just a theory, they've already done it. And then have all of your vehicle questions answered by Matt Gibbs on auto repair with personal care. And then Congressman Richard Nugent will be on the air answering your questions about what's going on in Congress. Selma Zirkelback is a speech pathologist specializing in helping young children with speech, language, and learning disabilities. She's written a book called Stumbling Through the Dark, a husband and wife's final year of life together. All of that plus fun with Joe on Mondays, AM Ocala Live, right here on The Source, WOCA 96.3 FM. 1370 AM. On the next Voice of Ocala, it's Community Gazette Day live from Gateway Bank. It's also Ask the Cops. It's your chance to call in and ask Chief Greg Graham of the Ocala Police Department or Sheriff Chris Blair of the Marion County Sheriff's Office any questions you might have about community policing in our area. Also, we'll bring you up to date on all the bracket stuff going on with the NCAA. It's not looking real good for some of the team here at the Voice of Ocala. We'll tell you who that is. All that next on Community Gazette Day on 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Cookies, 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 cookies. We when you cookie, want something cookie, special cookie. and fun for any occasion, get cookies. That's right. The Great American Cookie Company in the Paddock Mall, Ocala, will make a delicious, fun-filled delight just for you. You might notice that I said fun and delicious more than once. That's because I can't say it enough. The next time you're at the mall, be sure and stop by or call 352-237-2557 to place your order. Cookies, cookies, Yum. cookies, cookies. We go cookie-eating cookies. The Great American Cookie Company. Hey, welcome back to Ask the Cops with Sheriff Chris Blair and Chief Greg Graham. It's time now to ask the cops a question. If you'd like to, to ask one, well, you can call it 622-9622. Our lines are open right now. We'll put you right through, and uh, we'll see if we can address that. We've got a caller online right now. Um, let's go to Linda. Linda, you're on with Sheriff Blair and Chief Graham. Hi, Sheriff Blair. Hey, um, hi, Linda. I really want to say thank you for the new crime divisions you've started. And in the Star Banner, I've seen some of the uh, crimes you have solved, and I think that's wonderful. We can see improvements already. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I'm, I'm an animal lover, and I know in Marion County and the city of Ocala, we have problems with, like, dog fighting. I was wondering if you could just address that a little and what citizens of Marion County and Ocala could look for to kind of alert the uh, sheriff's department and the police department when there's illegal activity like that going on. Well, when a lot of that activity is going on, you know, it's uh, being held at uh, locations that are pr pretty well concealed, I would say. So uh, if you do hear something, the uh, most important thing is just notify the communication center, and, uh, and then we'll absolutely respond to it and check on it. But um, a lot of times in locations where the dogs are being held, you know, you'll see where they're tethered. Uh, they'll have cages, and, and that's some uh, possibility that you'll see that, and then it may occur. But um, I don't think you're personally going to get invited to a dog fight. <laughs> well, thank, thank you for so much for all the hard work you do to keep us safe. Uh, I appreciate it very much, and uh, we're going to continue our efforts out there to certainly keep right. everybody safe. You have a wonderful day. Thank you. Yeah, we're trying to get him down below 15 hours a day. He's working on it. And, Greg, what about you, the dogfighting thing? Do you have to deal with that at all, or is there anything out there? Is there stuff happening out in the forest, or what, what's happening? No, I mean, we've, we've, uh, we've had some tips of some dog, uh, you know, some dogfighting. Uh, where am I searching for? Uh, people. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and uh, you know, we go investigate it. Uh, we're, I'm actually in the process now. She she's going away next week of sending an officer to become one of our uh, to to become a animal uh, cruelty investigator, uh, just in case stuff like this comes up. But uh, you know, we really don't. We have really haven't seen that big of an issue in, inside the city. 
uh, lately with uh, organized dog fighting. But I'm sure that it's out there, and you know, just like the sheriff says, you know, you see somebody hauling a bunch of dogs around, or you know, you see many dogs tethered in the in their backyard, or a lot of buckets for feed and water and stuff. You know, I mean, how many how many pit bulls do you need? You know, so. Yeah, pick the phone up and give us a call, and we'll be happy to look into it because uh, I'm also an animal lover, and uh, the last thing I want to see is uh, animals being abused. Well, it seems to be a day for talking about animals because we were just talking about this, and you and I and, and, uh, and Chris, about the um, the dogs uh, that work for you uh, and you, you, your canine uh, yep. uh, uh, group, and you had a little change in the lineup there. Well, tell us about the canine program, and I'll get the Chris to expand on that too as well. Uh, about how that works and is it efficient and uh, what's going on with the ones that you got? How many do you have and what have you? Well, we've uh, the Ocala PD's got six uh, six canines. We've got um, uh, uh, they're all dual trained uh, patrol and drugs. We've also got a cadaver dog, and uh, they they constantly impress me with what these animals can do uh, in you know searching for people, finding articles, uh, items that have either been lost or tossed by. You know, one of these idiots that we're chasing down the road, and and uh, I, I, they're uh, they're phenomenally trained animals, and you know, and, and for the animals, they're playing. Uh, you know, it's it's they they don't necessarily feel like they're working. It's something they enjoy doing. They want to please their you know the, their partner, and uh, they have a great job. And they do a great job, and and the the handlers are you know special special people too, because it's not that they. You know, they go out and they get in their car and come to work, and you know, same thing. You know, they have their dog when they're just at work. They these animals live with them, and uh, well, they do. Yeah, they they live there. They care for them uh, most of the time. When the animal um, retires, the uh, handler gets to keep the dog, and uh, really? so you know, there's a special bond between uh, the handlers and the dog. How many do you have? Six. Six, six. Said that. Yeah. And you had a change recently. Sometimes you lose a dog. Yeah, we uh, we have a brand new dog that uh, you know was having some uh, medical issues or having was struggling. The, the handler took him to the vet, and they found a, a large mass, a tumorous mass, cancerous tumor mm-hmm. in, uh, in his abdomen, and we had to put him down. Uh, so we're in the process of getting him replaced. It's a pretty traumatic event uh, for us because we we come to you know get fairly attached to those uh, to the animals and certainly that the handler was too so you know it's 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 not an easy thing for them to go through and now the handler is going to have to go through another you know three or four months of training with a brand new dog to get them up to speed so that we can get them out there on patrol chris are your 10 on unit pretty effective no mm-hmm. absolutely i mean and you know it's just not really you know certainly we use them for apprehension but we also can use them for missing children missing persons and uh and you know like the chief said, you know, the, it, it's a, a bond between his handler and the dog itself, and, uh, you know, it's one that can't be broken. It's just so important. You know, the other day we had a, I was coming down State Road 40, and I hear one of our guys jump a, uh, a person that we've been looking for and actually escaped from us not long ago. Uh, we were able to take him into custody, but I heard the air unit go up. I heard the canine respond, and uh, between the city and the county, we were able to apprehend uh, this individual. So <clears throat> these dogs are important to uh, help us take people into custody also. All right, we've got a caller, Hughes, on line one. Hugh, go ahead. you got Sheriff Blair and Chief Graham. Uh, yes, I'd like to ask the gentleman, uh, how many patrol cars uh, does the uh, police and the sheriff's department have, and how is it determined to uh, to when they to replace a car? Is is it go by the age or the mileage, wow. and 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 do they buy like more at one time when, when they purchase the vehicles? Uh, great question. Uh, the Ocala PD, we've got a little over a hundred marked patrol cars. Um, there's a formula that we use through our city fleet uh, fleet department that uh, it, there's there's no magic number of years. A, a service a car we get out of the cars nor is there a magic uh, number of uh, miles that the cars get traded they're they're basically evaluated uh, for you know how they perform uh, once it reaches a certain level of re- where the repair costs have exceeded a certain amount then that's when it goes on the trading block for l- lack of a better term because you know you can have a car that with 20,000 miles on it that's in worse shape than a car that's got 150,000 miles on it um, so uh, we uh, and we try to trade them as as uh, as as 
we can. The, the unfortunate thing is the way the budgets are these days. It's it's difficult uh, to get uh, the funding for it. But uh, you know, did you just resurface, refurbish some recently or something? Uh, well, we got some brand new cars uh, this past year, and uh, we did a contest in the community to. to come up with a new color scheme uh and and, you know it's a black and white car now and it's beautiful it turned out really nice and you know we got input from the community and uh, from the officers and from some of the uh paint body shops in town and it actually turned out really really nice so you know uh uh, chris sometimes just the presence of that vehicle there can is pretty much of a a pretty good deterrent to crime as well isn't it you know it goes right back to uh prevention you know you just cannot measure what you prevent it by that green and white be there or or the black and white so uh so it's very important and we have a large number and a large fleet uh ours is aged you know uh, i'll just tell you it's aged we got um 150 200 miles on our cars uh you know last year you know the the county commissioners you know they they cited us for or gave us uh monies for 100 we purchased 52 i wasn't there um you know i'm going to probably have to ask again for more patrol cars because our fleet has aged and uh it's important that these cars are able to respond to these calls. And if we wind up in high-speed chases, it's important that they're, they're able to stay up with what they need to stay up with. So uh, we'll be looking, and we're, we're going to have to go down that road this year. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you also have more people out there, too, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, we've 157 patrolmen, but uh, what you need to really remember is that we're about 300 deputies short uh, in Marion County. You know, we have a .71 ratio of the 1,000 citizens versus a 1.7 state average. So, um, you know, we are behind. That's a tough one. All right, it seems like animals is a favorite topic of people today, but whatever. Here's one from Bob in Salt Springs. Trespassing wild animal. Can I shoot it? Chris, go ahead. Well, I think uh, it's probably going to depend on what kind of wild animal it is, but, uh, you know, I just hope it's not the neighbor's next-door dog. So uh, <laughs> yeah, that won't let's, work let's be well. careful with that. But, uh, you know, you got coyotes out there, mm-hmm. so uh, I, I have no issues with that. Mm-hmm. And I think you've got to protect yourself. If you've got chickens, ducks, or whatever, you know, I lost ducks to them. When, when I had a, a young daughter, you know, she wanted me to raise her ducks, and, and uh, they were pinned, but coyotes got in and got them. So um, certainly you've got the right to protect your other animals, too. And we do have coyotes here now. So Absolutely. It's a Western they're, phenomenon. Well, they're out there. Yeah. And also, you know, uh, I just heard the other day, uh, you know, actually today, you know, there was a bear right out there at uh, Baseline. You know, really? And, that uh, close in? Baseline and 17th Street. Out there, my wife near, saw out near a bear. The farm. And my wife saw a bear in the forest, of course. Now, that's a different deal. I guess if you're going to shoot something, you, it makes sure it's not a panther, right? Yeah. Well, that's true. That's, that's <laughs> Be don't careful. That. You go to jail for that. So, uh, you don't have that much of an issue, uh, 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 Greg, because you don't have that many animals in the city. But now, Every now and then you'll get a, a bear or something will migrate in the city and end up in a tree somewhere. But, you know, our, our, my big thing is before you shoot something, make sure you know what you're shooting. I mean, I don't know if too many wild shih tzus out there, but, you know, don't don't be, you know, plugging a neighbor's dog just because he's in your yard uh you know communicate with each other and and hopefully you can uh get it resolved without it but you know any kind of wild animal uh and what's important i mean we have animal control here so uh both in the city and the county so uh you know give us a phone call and and, and give them a phone call let them respond and, and see if we can't capture it first yeah. yeah uh just on a personal note real quick i wanted to tell you both that i have followed your advice and, and you, you've instructed me to be sure I'm vigilant and call had another situation happen in my neighborhood again of a person knocking on my door looking suspicious nobody I didn't have a car walked up well dressed gentleman wanted to I said I'm busy I don't have time to talk to you whatever uh, and, I, and he said I, I'll come back I said no don't come back I don't want, I'm busy I don't have time for it so I hung up and I thought it didn't look right here again a guy walking around no vehicle or anywhere and this has happened in my neighborhood three or four times now because there's a group of them that do this. They come in the van, as you know, right? and they let them out in the neighborhood. They all spread out, knock on your door, try to sell you something. And it's just a fine line thing because sometimes there are door-to-door salespeople, but it's just not safe. And I bring that up because of a story today or this week in Colorado. Well, the, the Department of Corrections man who works for the governor opened his door in Monument, Colorado, and was shot dead. It's just not safe in most places to open your doors to someone that you don't know. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Let me get comments from both of you so that's totally clear. 
Chris, well, you go I, I think you're absolutely right. I think, uh, you know, there's people out there that uh, you certainly don't know what they're up to, uh, especially in today's society. So uh, if they act suspicious and, you know, it's that gut feeling that, that I think all of us get as human beings. So if you get that gut feeling, I think you need to call. And it's important to call. Let us decide if the person's dangerous or if they're, they have a good reason why they are in your neighborhood. And by the way, Greg, you're, the person who answers your phones is very kind and I didn't call the 911 number because it wasn't an emergency. And the person who answered, I waited about a minute and a half. She was on very cordial, very nice. I said, the chief told me to call. <laughs> I'm just doing what he told me to do. She was very nice. Yeah, thank you very much. Our, our, our dispatch uh, personnel are just, uh, they're top notch. Uh, you know, they truly understand what customer service is and public service is. And, and I think they do a great job. And I, and I like what the sheriff says is that, you know, if somebody's knocking on your door or they're driving by your house and they're in your yard and you're not sure who they are or what they're there for, uh, give us a call. I mean, because, you know, depending on what they're doing, I mean, they may be legitimately lawfully soliciting in the neighborhood, but they've got to be licensed and then they've got to have permits. And, you know, we don't give those things out to certain types of uh, people, certainly convicted uh Convicted felons would not be a good. Well, test. it's sex offenders too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's a that's a big a big thing. So, you know, it, it, I'll say it a million times: uh, is don't ever hesitate to call call us if you think anything's out of the ordinary, because that's what we're here for. Appreciate that. All right, end of the segment. We'll come back, wrap up with Ask the Cops, Sheriff Blair, Chief Graham. After this timeout on ninety six point three. FM WOCA 1370 AM. Ask the cops. Hi, I'm Lisa Midget with Kinetic Motion Fitness, Ocala's premier small group and personal training fitness studio. Did you know you can achieve all your fitness goals, whether that's losing weight, getting fit, or training for a personal best, all with no membership fees? Have you ever been embarrassed or intimidated at a big gym because you're not a Greek god or a size zero supermodel? Have you ever felt like your gym would rather you not even show up? At KMF, we have a team approach that focuses on small classes and personal training, and you'll feel like family, not just another number. No more boring treadmills or endless reps. Our classes are fun, energetic, and get you the results you want. And I should know, with the help of our great trainers, I lost over 100 pounds in eight jean sizes, and I did it using no heavy equipment and no magic pills, just fun and effective workouts. And yes, I did say fun. Come join us at KMF. Visit our website at kmfocala.com or like us on Facebook. Again, that was kmfocala.com. Since 1976, Daniel L. Hightower, lawyer, has been fighting for accident victim justice in North Central Florida and statewide. He believes everyone in America should follow the rules, including the insurance companies. He and his firm have experience fighting for victims of personal injury, wrongful death, workers' compensation, and social security disability, as well as serving those in need of help with bankruptcy, simple wills, and estate plans. The mission at the law offices of Daniel L. Hightower, PA, is to represent deserving clients and recover the maximum benefits they are entitled to by law in a timely manner. In personal injury and workers' compensation cases, there are no fees or costs unless a recovery is made. The law office of Daniel L. Hightower is located at 7 East Silver Springs Boulevard, Suite 300. For your free consultation, call 352-629-7777 or 1-888-LAW-1976 and visit danhightower.com for more information. Daniel L. Hightower, PA lawyer, fighting for accident victim justice, the proud sponsor of Ask the Cops. WOCA Ocala. Phoenix Promotional Solutions, your company supplier of banners, digital decals, yard signs, and magnetic signs. Where you give them approved artwork by noon, the next day by 4 p.m., you pick up your banners, digital decals, yard signs, and magnetic signs. Phoenix Promotional Solutions, 368-2404. That's 368-2404. Don't forget, they do vehicle wraps also. Phoenix Promotional Solutions, 368-2404. Don't get caught in the dark. Call Tri-County Generators, LLC, first at 1-800-622-1957, your authorized Generac dealer. Tri-County Generators are there when you need them with new generators for home standby, commercial, RV, and portable generators. They also service your existing systems. Now is the time to act. Be prepared before you have an emergency. Call Mike Gant today at 1-800-622-1957. That's 1-800-622-1957 for Tri-County Generators. 
What's up with you this weekend? Oh, just doing my taxes. Doing your taxes? Go to Liberty Tax. Do you want your money fast or do you want to wait? Fast, I guess. That's right. And where do you get America's fastest refunds? Liberty Tax Service. Let Liberty Tax show you the freedom. Find us at LibertyTax.com or call 866-871-1040 today to find a location near you. That's 866-871-1040. And remember, March 18th to the 23rd, medical personnel get their taxes done free. Habitat for Humanity of Marion County is a ministry dedicated to improving lives by providing affordable and decent housing. Help them help others by visiting the Habitat for Humanity Ocala Home Store on Northwest 27th Avenue. To schedule a donation, give them a call and they'll come and pick it up. For more information, visit HabitatOcala.org. Habitat for Humanity of Marion County. Building homes, building hope, building community. All right, welcome back to the final segment of Ask the Cops with Sheriff Chris Blair and Chief Greg Graham, presented by Daniel L. Hightower, attorney. Interesting day, guys. I thought we had some good questions. There was a good dialogue. And a couple of things we didn't get in. One of them was about this. Sometimes you be surprised what you find on a homeless person when you arrest them, don't you? Well, uh, you know, we had one uh, this week, you know, homeless man arrested and uh, for retail theft of $2, uh, of uh, actually sardines. Uh, two that two dollar can of sardines. That's what he had, yeah. and uh, but we found him to have twenty seven hundred dollars in cash, food stamp card, and one gallon size freezer bag of marijuana. <laughs> so uh, kind of interesting. He was diverse, wasn't he? It goes back to what I said. <laughs> yeah. You never know, right? You never know. Exactly right. I know there are issues always with homeless, and we all have our hearts go out to them and all that kind of stuff. But you have to. Be diligent, don't you, Greg, about that? Because there are some elements there that are risky, aren't they? Yeah, unfortunately, there's uh, there's always somebody out there trying to scam someone else, and uh, you know, it's like getting the uh, the emails that you know say, "Hey, my, I'm from Nigeria, and my, you know, they they found you know six million dollars in your you know, great 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 grand." Send me five hundred dollars, and I'll take care of you. Right? You know, but it's uh, it 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 is a shame that uh, you have somebody that that you know has the means or at least has that amount of money and decides to steal anyway i don't know why anybody would want to steal a can of sardines you, know, <laughs> but, you don't even like them do you? But, no, i don't need no, them no, no, i don't I, I don't know you know if i ever got caught shoplifting i'd want it to be something <laughs> it's worthwhile it? yeah something to go okay well i, I can kind of understand that but yeah not a can of sardines but yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I guess he must have had the munchies after the marijuana. So, but I would have gone to McDonald's or Burger yeah, King or something. It would have been a little <laughs> easier. I mean, he had twenty seven hundred dollars to buy whatever he needed. Exactly. Didn't you have another scam thing come up too? You're talking. Oh about? yeah, we uh we had a uh, adoption scam. Basically, a thirty one year old uh, female. She got received seventy one hundred dollars for an adoption of her baby. Uh, the problem was is that she was never pregnant. Huh. So uh, we okay. ended up arresting her uh, this uh-huh. week. So uh, that was another one we had this week. And the other thing I just want to kind of mention, buddy, is, uh, you know, county commissioners uh, passed a panhandling ordinance for us in the county. So um, I think that's really going to help us out. And the way I'm approaching that is, you know, we're going to do a warning warn system first, primary make contact with them, let them know that uh, it's now going to be against the law, and uh, we're going to give you an opportunity to do the right thing. Uh, we'll document them through 5 reports, uh, and then if we uh, catch you again, then things will happen but uh, i think it's going to be good for the community i'm sure that a lot of people are tired of uh people approaching them at the red lights we talked about this a couple weeks ago in fact it's in the printed version of ask the cops which appears in neighbors magazine coming up in, in a couple of weeks and that question was asked at that time and you said in the answer we don't have a policy for this yet but now we have one don't we well we have an ordinance and, and certainly you know i, I want to uh, thank uh, kathy bryan with the commission and the commissioners you know uh for supporting that uh they were behind it 100 uh, percent. and certainly you know our people our office they, they teamed up in this community to make that happen as a team to go forward okay all right, gentlemen, thanks very much, Chris. Appreciate you being here. Greg, always a pleasure to have you. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thanks really for keeping our streets it. safe out there, and I love the idea of making this the safest place in the world. Yep. And uh, just don't let them come up north from Orlando. Keep them down <laughs> there. Will you please? Great job, gentlemen. We're going to do our best. We're, uh, we got a great partnership between the city and the county. Hey, listen, we know yeah. now that the city and county can work together. This radio show has proven that, right? Absolutely. 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 All right, thanks, gentlemen. Appreciate that very much. Okay, that wraps up uh, the first two hours of the program.
Stay tuned. More coming up your way in just a moment with Buddy Sports Page. We've got Tom down at Bay Hill. Coach Tim Ryan of the CF Patriots are going to the Final Four. He'll be calling in from Kansas. And of course, we'll wrap it up with our friend Joe Williams from Mile High Sports Endeavor. Stay tuned to the Voice of Ocala, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, WOCA, The Source. got you down? Are you at your wit's end? Does the opposite sex just confuse you? Then I've got the solution for you, Dr. Buddy. Well, let me just tell you what you slugs are doing wrong. Remember, dummy, it's about the chase and the romantic interludes, okay? Now, here's the difference. Instead of dinner and a movie, which seems obsolete these days, uh, they have these, these random phone text, Facebook posts, instant message, and quote-unquote non-dates. Traditional courtship, which is still what women want, guys. Picking up a telephone, asking someone on a date, maybe even going as far to pick them up in your car, mm-hmm. requires courage, strategic planning, and a considerable investment in ego. So now you know where to tune in to get all your relationship advice. It's the Dr. Buddy Show every Monday on The Voice of Ocala. You can succeed only on 96.3 FM, 1370 AM, The Source. Hi, this is Tom Schmitz, the host of Buddy's Saturday Sports Page on WOCA. The Saturday Sports Page is your weekend destination for everything sports. From NASCAR to golf, baseball to boxing, and of course, the best, most comprehensive football coverage on the radio. Also, you don't want to miss my weekly Are You Kidding Me rant? So join me and J.J. LaSalva every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. for Buddy's Saturday Sports Page on WOCA, The Source. Are you looking for a trustworthy auto care company that won't sell you something you don't need? Look no further than Affordable Auto Air and Care. Affordable Auto Air and Care has serviced Ocala for a decade and is family owned and operated. They offer quality parts at affordable prices and they even include a one year or 12,000 mile warranty on their parts and labor. Their certified technicians work on any type of vehicle, even RVs. They specialize in auto AC, but they also offer oil changes, brake service, filters, tune up shocks, axles, complete Complete auto repair. Affordable Auto Air and Care is located at 1841 Northwest 4th Avenue on the corner of Old Jacksonville Road and 441. Call 352-401-0011 to book an appointment. That's 352-401-0011. Affordable Auto Air and Care. Complete auto repair. Take it from me, Tom Schmitz. I'm a customer. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. Married men are more likely to keep up with routine doctor's visits than bachelors. Their cancer was detected earlier, so they were 35% more likely to survive. The longer we commute, the more stress we have in our bodies, the higher our body mass index, and the more strain it puts on our relationships. People learn more effectively when they break up their lessons over several short sessions rather than one long cramming marathon. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. They've served our country. They've kept us free. And they need your help. We're sitting in Veterans Park. You can't sit here not realizing that you're surrounded by heroes. There are a lot of heroes in our community. A lot of heroes, unfortunately, are not in good financial shape. They're hurting both physically and financially. We step in and help directly. Our role is to reach out to them. We're there to help the veteran. We do counseling. We do outreach. Sometimes it's just coming into the office and sitting down and saying, hey, I've got a problem. And you're talking to another veteran who understands that problem. Everybody who works for the Vets Helping Vets are awesome. And they are so kind to everybody. They're like my second family. They really are. They have been there during the holidays. I have gotten unexpected visits, assistance. Vets Helping Vets of Marion County needs your help. Call today, 352-433-2320, and pledge your support to Vets Helping Vets of Marion County. It really has been a blessing. Every day we hear another story about innovation or about cutting-edge technology taking place right here in Ocala, the power plant. 
IHMC, Ocala 489. Did you know that important medical research is also being conducted here that may impact hundreds of thousands of people in the country someday? Maybe you've heard the name Renstar, but like so many others, perhaps you didn't realize that Renstar Medical Research is one of the top facilities of its kind anywhere in the U.S. There are important research studies being conducted by a highly qualified team of medical experts at Renstar, impacting decisions of major pharmaceutical companies and bringing new drugs to market. And you can be a part of these studies, as so many local people have done and are currently doing. Renstar has conducted more than 500 studies since its inception and would like to extend the opportunity to you to be a part of these cutting-edge programs. Call 877-629-5800 or 352-629-5800 if you'd like to know more. Renstar Medical Research, locally owned and operated in beautiful downtown Ocala. Renstar, seeking tomorrow's answers to the health questions of today. You're listening to WOCA News Talk 1370, Ocala's source for what's happening in today's hottest up-to-date news and topics. Who aren't owe nearly 40% more than they did in the year 2000. The Census Bureau says the median debt load rose to $70,000. How could anyone do this? That's what police in Georgia are asking after arresting two teens in a brutal attack that killed a one year old boy and wounded his mother. The woman was pushing a child in a stroller when the 14 year old and the 17 year old approached her and allegedly demanded money. When they refused, they reportedly opened fire hitting the baby in the head. A resolution that was passed today in North Dakota is getting national attention on both sides of the abortion debate. The, it says that life begins at conception and it could be a step toward outlawing abortion. Well, here's proof that too much of a good thing is certainly bad. A woman who may have heard of the health benefits of tea drank a super strong pitcher of it every day. Doctors say she had such a high fluoride level that her bones and teeth became brittle. This is ABC News. Only the Home Depot has kiddo worry-free smoke alarms from just $24.97. A sealed lithium battery keeps these alarms working for 10 years so you never change batteries. With four models for specific rooms in your home, like a lighted hallway alarm or voice alert bedroom alarm, upgrade your smoke alarms and set your worries aside for 10 years. Kiddo worry-free smoke alarms starting at just $24.97. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. U.S. only. See store for details. Never play leapfrog with a unicorn. Never run with scissors, unless you're a tardy barber. Never wear a fanny pack. No, really, don't ever wear a fanny pack. And never trust a car that hasn't been trusted to Midas. Save on brakes, maintenance, and total car care for a car you can depend on long after the warranty expires. You deserve the Midas touch. Get a comprehensive oil change, tire rotation, and visual brake check for $19.99. Up to five quarts conventional oil. Shop fees extra. Most vehicles at participating Midas. How much time? 30, 30 seconds. I'm on right now. I don't believe you. Okay, okay. Enough kidding around. Ho, 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 ho. Ho, ho, ho. And now it's time for the Buddy Martin Buddy, Sports Bay. He actually had me stay here last night. In his gym. It's like I don't fit in. It's like I don't belong here. Let's go talk to a couple of guys that never gamble. Oh, see, I made Lewis a bet here. See, Lewis bet me that we couldn't both get rich and put you on the poor house at the same time. He didn't think we could do it. Gambling is illegal at Bushwood, sir, and I never slice. And now, here's Buddy. All right, welcome. It's the Friday Drive here at Gateway Bank, presented by Prestige Auto. And today, Chris Spears has a special guest he would like us to have on and talk about the Easter season coming up. Darren Gaddis is the pastor at First Baptist Church, and I'll just say hello to you, Darren, and thanks for joining us. Hey there, buddy. How's it going today? I'm doing good. I'm sorry about your Wildcats getting knocked off, but hey. Oh, they, I yeah. knew you would start there. But well, uh, you had yeah. it last year. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's all good. We got we got a great recruiting class next year. What can I say? Absolutely, it's uh, how it is in basketball, up and down. Well, they got the big Easter season coming up, and a lot of things planned. And I know you want to share a few thoughts with our listeners there. And go ahead. Well, sure. Lots of people are uh, beginning to make plans uh, to attend the church somewhere on Easter Sunday, and we're just a little over a week from from the Easter uh, coming up, and we're planning big things at First Baptist Church, and we're launching a brand new series of messages uh, called Epic Fail, and it's dealing with failure, because we know that everybody fails, 
And, uh, and and the question is then, what do you do with that failure when it comes your way? And so we're going to be looking at a number of characters from the Bible who have major failures in their lives and see how most of them rebounded and, and came back stronger. Uh, and we're going to deal with a number of topics. We'll look at commitment failure and marital failure and uh, what happens when you have a financial or health failure and uh, moral failure, integrity failure. What, what happens when your reputation is, is soiled uh, in the community, and how do you respond to those kind of things? So we're very excited uh, about uh, this particular series. I believe it's going to uh, touch a lot of a lot of folks who deal with some issues in their lives. Well, it's certainly the high holidays, and lots of folks that don't go to church any uh, at all except during Easter holidays. And hey, listen, if that's the only day you can go, at least that's one, right? That's right. That's right. And, and you know, we've got a, a, a new thing that's happening in the life of our church just a, a couple of months ago. Uh, we brought two distinct worship styles that happened uh, in different locations, and we sort of scrapped that, and we're coming together as one congregation where worship style doesn't really matter as much. So we've got uh, younger and older all together worshiping together. It's a, it's a really incredible experience, and it's happening every Sunday. So we'd love to have some folks come out and join us. Well, thank you for sharing that, Darren. All the best to you, the folks over there at First Baptist, and I'll just say Happy Easter right now. Same to you, and, and uh, if, if anybody's interested in coming and being a part, uh, we're located at 2801 on um, uh, Southeast Maricamp Road. Our services begin promptly at 1030 every Sunday. I hope to see some folks out. It's the big church right there on 17th. Thank you so much, Darren. Thank you so much, buddy. All right, time now for Buddy Sports Page on a busy Friday. we got loaded up for a bear here and ready to go, and Tom Schmidt, speaking of bear, I'll be standing by momentarily from down in Orlando. I have not seen the leaderboard at this point. Sean, you might pull it up over there and see how what the leader is, and Tom, I'm sure, will break it down for us. Uh, we'll check that with you in just a minute. Uh, also, a very exciting time for, for, for college sports in our community. Uh, the Gators aren't the only ones in the tournament. The CF Patriots are in the tournament. They're in the Final Four of National Junior College Tournament in Hutchinson, Kansas, a chance to win it all. Uh, and we'll be talking to the head coach of the Patriots tonight uh, at 5.30 from right almost on courtside where they play. I think it's tonight. Is it 11 o'clock? I mean, what time is it our time? Do you know, Sean? What time is the game? Is it 10 o'clock? Not sure. I think it's 10 o'clock. I'll look, I'll look it up. You can go on uh, in, in J. The Gator game is at 7. Gator game, but the Patriots game is at like oh, 10 or okay. something. Yeah. Uh, and uh, anyway, we'll check that before I give you a time on that. Um, and then uh, right now. Laura Klein is here. She and Josh DeSalva. We're going to talk baseball with you momentarily. And uh, we will uh, we'll do all that. But, J.J., you got some headlines for me yet? I got Tom on the phone. Is what all I right. Think. Well, you look up the headlines, and after we talk to Tom, we'll do the headlines, okay? Here's Tom. All right. Yes. Hello, Tom. How's it going down there? And who's leading the tournament? We don't have the... It's going hmm? good, buddy. What's happening? Uh, well, it's, uh, the rain just came in, and it's uh, pouring rain on us now. But we've uh, we've witnessed uh, great golf. Uh, Teddy Potter, though, however, is not doing very well at ten over for the day. Going to miss the cut. Hmm. Not good. Uh, of course, uh, used to have a lot of bad weather in Arnie's tournament. You know, over the years. Now, the recent years, we've had good weather, and now we're back to the bad weather. So, uh, uh, so the crowd's scurrying for a cover, probably there, aren't they? Can you hear me, Tom? Tommy, uh, I think we lost Tom. Sounds like the bad weather got to, to Tom. So. Tom, are you there? No, we've lost him. Uh, he'll call us back. We'll get back with him. Uh, by the way, uh, CF will play tonight at 9 o'clock. They'll play a team from Spartanburg. Uh, and uh, they're, num- they're the number two ranked team. So it's number two versus number three. Spartanburg Methodist tonight at 9. So that should be a heck of a game. And <clears throat> I believe that website is in... Uh, NCJAA.org. NJCAA. NJCAA.org. Yeah. Uh, and you can so watch the game. So I'll be watching the Gator game, and I'm going to tune in to uh, the Patriot game because <clears throat> that's going to be fun to watch them. <clears throat> Imagine if we brought a national championship back to Ocala. Would well, that yeah, be cool? That'd right? be awesome. There's well, we two have of them. All right, see, we got time back once again. All right, Tom, are you there? Yeah, buddy, sorry. The weather is uh, quite a mess here right now. Yeah, we uh, ran out on the course. Mm-hmm. Tiger Woods. Uh, <laughs> Looking at movie on uh, I think Tom's in a bad cell. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to have to scrub it and try it later in the program. All right. Sorry about that, Tom. We'll get back to you when we get a little better. Of course, the, probably the weather is what's taking them out. So, 
By the way, tonight, uh, Gators play uh, against Northwestern State. That's a 727 tip there in Austin, Texas, and, of course, it will be on True TV. You know, and I feel sorry for the people that don't have True TV. You know, that's the bad <laughs> part about it. Go to your local sports bar. Yeah, yeah whatever. Uh, and uh, it's on 103.7 FM, uh, the other station, which is in, ja- in Gainesville. But I'm not sure if we can get it here in Ocala. And by the way, buddy, we do have that channel in HD. I found it last night. No, we night. do. I found I watched it last night. Right. It is, and here's the other thing. I got it on my uh, on my iPad. They put all the channels together, which works out. Yeah, I got my iPad. Uh, I, got, I was watching one game on my iPad last night and another on TV. That's kind of cool. You know, you do that too. So, uh, yeah, J.J., can you get to those headlines now and see what's going on in the world of sports? I know a lot of crazy things and uh yeah. In, uh, in sports. and uh, Let's go a- through the basketball scores first. All right. Please, do you have to? <laughs> <laughs> well, Duke won today. Yeah. Not a surprise. They beat Albany. Temple beat North Carolina State. Uh, Ole Miss upset Wisconsin. 12 seed always beats a five. It happened three times already. I know. Uh, Miami destroyed Pacific by 29 points. How about buddy. those Miami looks very strong. There you go. LaSalle and Kansas State tied. LaSalle actually had a massive lead at halftime. Kansas State's came back at 60-60 with three minutes left in the game. Indiana, right before halftime, is beating James Madison handily by 21. Creighton about to beat Cincinnati. Well, actually, it's a three-point game. Creighton's beating Cincinnati yeah, by Yeah, of course, it's none of the big game I picked. Cincinnati, you're going to get beat there. My, my brackets are look like a war zone. And in football, after releasing... <clears throat> Brian Erlacher, or not re-signing Brian Erlacher. The Bears have signed former Bronco, former Hurricane, D.J. Williams, who mm-hmm. always has some off-the-field troubles. Ed Reed, also a former Hurricane, signed today with the Texans. Three-year, $15 million contract. That's buddy. a big get for the Texans. By the way, whenever you have this uh, happen to a former Gator, I want you to be sure and say former Gator, too, okay? <laughs> Just to get that in there. I will. Uh, I got you. But, um, you know, they don't seem to get signed to big contracts in the NFL. Oh, they don't, do they? Former Gator uh, Tim Tebow yeah, well, there might are, go to there the There are Orlando a few Predators. others out there besides Tim Tebow. Just uh, just I'm just messing with get. you. Yeah. I'm just messing Anyway, uh, Ed Reed is a big get for Texans. They need some help in the secondary, and he's uh, you know, they were very porous last year, so they could use that help for sure. And in basketball, it looks like uh, Kobe and, um, and, and Powell are going to be playing tonight in the lineup. Correct. And how about this other win streak nobody's talking about? Denver? The Denver Nuggets had an unbelievable comeback last night. And Corey Brewer, former Gator, <laughs> uh, comes back and, and makes, makes the three foul shots. Oh, they were down like seven High points with 15 seconds. Who knew there was NBA going on last night? How about that? Buddy, you did. Uh, I know. I I just happened to see the highlights today. Big Nuggets fan. Brewer actually had 29 points. Played big time. He was a big part of the national championship team. He's a terrific defender and rebounder. He just started to play well. How about the the Nuggets? What's that, 13 for them? 14. Nobody's nobody's talking about the Nuggets. Well, when you got 24, it's hard to. It is, and they look awesome. He looked really awesome right now. I don't know. Like we said last night, it's going to be a it's going to be a haul. It's going to be a difficult. Let's and take they, a break. They play tonight, by the way, seven thirty. Okay, thanks, JJ. We'll take a break. Come back. We've got the high school uh, show coming up. Uh, Tim Ryan at the bottom of the hour, and uh, Joe Williams to finish out the show. So stay tuned right here to the Voice of Ocala Buddy Sports Page on thirteen seventy AM ninety six point three FM WOCA, the Source. Hi, this is Tom Schmitz, the host of Buddy's Saturday Sports Page on WOCA. The Saturday Sports Page is your weekend destination for everything sports. From NASCAR to golf, baseball to boxing, and of course, the best, most comprehensive football coverage on the radio. Also, you don't want to miss my weekly Are You Kidding Me rant? So join me and J.J. LaSalva every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. for Buddy's Saturday Sports Page on WOCA, The Source. Every day we hear another story about innovation or about cutting-edge technology taking place right here in Ocala. The power plant, IHMC, Ocala 489. Did you know that important medical research is also being conducted here that may impact hundreds of thousands of people in the country someday? Maybe you've heard the name RENSTAR, but like so many others, perhaps you didn't realize that RENSTAR Medical Research is one of the top facilities of its kind anywhere in the U.S. There are important research studies being conducted by a highly qualified team of medical experts at RENSTAR, impacting decisions of major pharmaceutical companies and bringing new drugs to market. And you can be a part of these studies, as so many local people have done and are currently doing. RENSTAR has conducted more than 500 studies since its inception and would like to extend the opportunity to you to be a part of these cutting-edge programs. 
call 877-629-5800 or 352-629-5800 if you'd like to know more. Renstar Medical Research, locally owned and operated in beautiful downtown Ocala. Renstar, seeking tomorrow's answers to the health questions of today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And so is State Farm agent Angie Lewis, working hard to serve her community as a citizen and insurance agent. Angie wants to help you as you adjust your insurance needs to your life. From everything to helping educate your teen driver to protecting your family against everyday risk. She wants to change the way you perceive insurance by developing relationships with their clients, which is why Angie and her staff are proud to be a part of so many good causes in Ocala. In turn, she has chosen to single out those who step up as leaders. Each month on The Voice of Ocala, Angie spotlights a good neighbor, saluting those who give exceptional service or do random acts of kindness to others. For this, Angie was written up in State Farm's National Magazine. Angie also supports local businesses with a regular biz buzz. The Angela State Farm Agency is located at 1122 Northeast 36th Avenue, where visitors are always welcome and the coffee pot is always on. Call your good neighbor's State Farm agent today, Angie Lewis, at 294-2444. Hi, this is Brad, one of the hosts of Winging It here on WOCA every Friday at 9 a.m. I want to take a moment to talk about a serious issue regarding aviation. In the next five years, the aviation industry is projected to have a shortage of commercial pilots, in part due to the lack of new pilots starting their flight training now. A pilot needs two to three years to get through their training and to build up enough flight time to be able to be hired. Now is the time to start training. Ocala Flying Club has started a scholarship for the youth of Marion County ages 17 to 24. The club will donate up to $4,000 towards a private pilot's license. This license will help get the student on their way to obtain their commercial pilot license. Now, of course, the student does not have to have aspirations of becoming a commercial pilot. If they simply have a desire to obtain their private pilot's license so they may enjoy the adventures of flying, they may also apply for the scholarship. If this sounds like something you would be interested in, or if you know someone that would be, please contact me, Brad, or Ron at Ocala Aviation Services. 861-7484. That's 861-7484. Stay informed on everything going on in the villages with the Village Spectator newspaper. The Village Spectator is exclusively devoted to the villages with news, commentary, and more. And yes, they have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company that fits your needs, and all we ask is that you tell them where you heard about them. Call Tom's Picks at 804-1223 and pick up your copy of the Village Spectator today. Now read Ocala Downtown Newspaper Online. On the next Voice of Ocala, it's Community Gazette Day, live from Gateway Bank. It's also Ask the Cops. It's your chance to call in and ask Chief Greg Graham of the Ocala Police Department or Sheriff Chris Blair of the Marion County Sheriff's Office any questions you might have about community policing in our area. Also, we'll bring you up to date on all the bracket stuff going on with the NCAA. It's not looking real good for some of the team here at the Voice of Ocala. We'll tell you who that is. All that next on Community Gazette Day on 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Welcome back to the program, by Sports Page. We're going to go back one more time to Orlando and see if we can, in fact, hook up with Tom Schmitz to get a report about what's happening down there in Arnie's Invitational. Is your Tom, mic you on, buddy? you got to turn your mic on, buddy. Yeah, my mic is on. Yeah. Uh, buddy's mic that doesn't yeah. sound on. Hello? Doesn't. Okay, how are you? All right. Yeah, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Did okay. you not turn it on, buddy? No, I didn't touch it. I mean, it's just, uh, we're good. Okay, Tom, uh, what's going on down there with Arnie's tournament? Well, what started off as a beautiful day, buddy, has now turned into a rainy day. Justin Rhodes still with the lead. Tiger Woods one stroke back. But as I came out to make this call, Tiger had hit his ball into the water on 16. Hmm. So i got to get back in to see what's going on. Story for Ocala, Ted Potter Jr., 10 over for the tournament, 6 over for the day, not going to make the cut. Shot of the day, however, buddy, something that Hunter Turner and I both got to see at number 14. Kevin Chappelle, 190-yard par three, six iron for double eagle hole-in-one. Wow. If I just had heard who Kevin Chappelle was, I might be impressed. I, well, it was impressive, no matter who it was. 190 yards into the wind, uphill, nothing but the bottom of the cup. Wow. Now, so what's the deal now with the weekend, Tom? The weekend's shaping up like it's going to be Justin Rhodes and Tiger Woods and then the rest of the field. So it looks like it's going to be... A marquee matchup. We'll see how it goes. Tiger Woods birdied 
six, Eagle six, birdie 11, birdie 13 for a uh, straw. He started on the front. Uh, Eagle six, birdie 11, birdie 13. And he looks like he's about to bogey 16. So setting up for Justin Rose and Tiger Woods for a weekend showdown. What a great sports week. We got, uh, we got uh, Arnie's Invitational. We got the, uh, uh, obviously, we got uh, the March Madness going on. Spring football, no, my, spring baseball, everything happening right no, now. No, no, there's no March Madness. North New Mexico yeah. lost last night. My bracket's done. We're not yeah. following March Madness. I got news for you. Creighton just beat Cincinnati. One more loss for me. Mm. That's and, another loss for me, too. Yeah, and I'm by the way, LaSalle, anyway. LaSalle's nine seconds away from beating Kansas State. So. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Yeah, no. So okay, just, I'm going back in here. Yeah, you better go now. I can care less. You better go, yeah. yeah. I'll see you, Tom. Yeah, all right. Have a great day. Yeah, all right, Tom. All right, time now to talk. Let's not talk about March Madness since it makes me sick of my stomach. Let's talk about high school sports. And with us today, our gang is here. Our team is here. Um, uh, Laura Klein and uh, Josh LaSalva. We're going to talk about baseball. Hello, guys. How you doing? I'm doing, doing well. good. Well, welcome to the High School Athletic Spotlight. I am Josh LaSalva here with Laura Klein. As always. And... Some major points that I have for you this week in your high school sports. Number one, Trinity Catholic's Jamonte Jones, the standout cornerback for the football team, signed on Thursday with the University of Central Florida. Number two, Forest Baseball sits atop of Marion County. And number three, just one name, all you got to hear it, Dash Winningham. So let's get back to number one about Jamonte Jones. The standout cornerback from Trinity Catholic is headed to Orlando signed on Thursday to take the next step into his playing career and off to college he goes Jamonte Jones said to the star banner that you know I have enough talent to play at the D1 level there weren't many offers but at the end of the day he went with UCF um, he originally did not know when to go did not know where to go uh, coach Brantley said hey just relax be patient the right offer will come he took up the offer for UCF and now with some baseball news, last night Forrest defeated Lecanto 3-2. to um, I was not at the game. Josh was. but uh, I always make plans. Laura. Good. Sorry, I had practice. But from my sources, what I heard, it wasn't the best game for the Wildcats. Um, no. Was no. It wasn't too pretty. But uh, Kirby McMullen had the go-ahead base hit in the bottom of the sixth to give wild, the Wildcats the winning run. Um, Josh Green also played well for the Wildcats with two hits, two stolen bases, and one run. Um, and lately, Forrest has been doing outstanding in their pitching. They lead the county in ERA, uh, 0.59. Uh, Danny Miller started up the night, uh, and Robert Ritterhoff recorded the save. Solid pitching, led by a lot of seniors. Anthony Mazurko, Blake Waldron, who's a junior, uh, threw a no-hitter earlier this season. All right. Really, really solid pitching. Uh, not quite producing at the plate, uh, kind of in the middle of the county in those standings. But, I mean, I like the direction of that team because if you pitch well and play good defense, your offense will come. And if that means only scoring three runs and still winning a game at the high school level, talk about good pitching. That's all you need. Exactly. And tonight they'll have a tough matchup with 10-6 and six Bellevue, who beat Vanguard 8-5 to five last night. So that should be a good and game. And Forest record, they're sitting atop of Marion County with a 12-2 and two record. They beat GHS this week on the road, as well as hosting Lacanto last night, of course, only winning 3-2. to two. And I'm predicting another easy win for Forest, though. Hopefully. Tonight. And this mostly the timely hitting always coming up in the clutch. So it was the bottom of the sixth inning, and Curry Mullen, a freshman. A freshman, the only freshman on the roster. Steps up to the plate, and he started the game, actually, for pitching. And first inning gave up a monster home run over the left field wall. So he had a little, got a little rattle during the game. Bump so. the road. But then he came back in and hit a double down the left field line, drove in Josh Green to give us a go-ahead one, uh, run, won the game 3-2. to two. So, now, speaking of baseball, very important thing to talk about for me personally. Of course it's for you. Um, my man Dash Winningham, he's at it again, Laura. He is at it again. Seems to always be. Uh, this week, he increased his home run total to nine home runs so far. And they have only played 12 games. So if you're hitting nine home runs in 12 games, I think you're doing pretty all right. He hit three home runs last night against Santa Fe, and Trinity Catholic won the game 4-3. to three. Guess how many RBIs Dash Winningham had? Uh, four, I think. He had all the runs scored for Trinity Catholic. So, it's not really surprising, though. He finished the game batting 3-3, three for three, and Trinity Catholic Celtics are 10-2. and two. They play South Sumter tonight at 7 o'clock. T.C. Forrest 
I wish they played each other. That would be a great game. Why can't they play each other? I mean, the public school, private school rivalry is, rivalry is always a great one, and I wish we could watch it. But don't forget, I mean, there's um, some other stars on the Trinity Catholic squad. Tim Redomozo went two for three last night. Jesse Lepore is not that bad either. He did no, sign. No, he did. He did, he did know, sign with the University of Miami, Miami to play baseball. Which makes so I guess he's all right. Proud. But and Sam Atwell, Sam Atwell accorded the save last night. One of my good friends. So. You know, they're not too bad of a squad. Dash Winningham might be your man, but they have a pretty good squad. No, 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 no. Not my man. He is the man Got it. on the Excuse roster. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Uh, some other scores from last night. OCA demolished Eastland Christian 20-9. to um, And Bellevue beat Vanguard 8-5, to who plays for- Bellevue plays for us tonight. Now, what's Vanguard's record? Vanguard is sub uh, under 500. I'm not sure. I think they're like record. four and nine, I believe. Something like that. And Danellen beat North Marion three to one. One of our preseason favorites. Um, yeah. Four, four and eight, Danellen. I don't Never know about North Marion. It doesn't look like a Coach Hall team out there. Um, but hey, it is what it is. Also, with some other Forest High School track and field news, uh, Forest hosted the game last night. Uh, hosted track and field championships. Bellevue girls won. Uh, the runner-up was Vanguard, and Vanguard boys won for track and field action last night. Um, but that's all we have for the high school show today. Josh, thanks for joining Thanks for me. having me on, as always. And that'll be it for our show today. My, might be my last one for a while. No, but. Won't be. you'll be back. <laughs> Laura Klein, thank you, Laura, and Josh LaSalva. Good job, guys. Appreciate it very thank much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> all right, stay tuned. Coming up, uh, the coach of the CF Patriots in the Final Four of the National Junior College Tournament joins us. Meanwhile, um, Indiana leading 43 43- 22 easily. Colorado uh, behind by 10 against Illinois. And it uh, looks like uh, if you took, uh, uh, well, I'll, talk, I'll re-wrap it up for you after the break. But it uh, looks like a couple more upsets could be brewing. So stay tuned to uh, the program called Buddy Sports Page. Coming up next, Coach Tim Ryan on 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, WOCA, the source. Hi, this is Buddy Martin. I want to tell you about a conversation I had recently with General Manager Pat Murray on the great family atmosphere at Country Club of Ocala. It's a family first club. Um, again, we you know we, we we have any number of different types of memberships, but obviously the, the, the one that attracts the greatest level of interest is our family. And the reason for that is we have a little something for everybody. I mean, we have we obviously have a world class golf course. Um, we have uh, seven tennis courts here for all levels of uh, tennis players. We have a junior Olympic size swimming pool. We have the uh, we have a fitness center that's that's second to none, and we have state of the art equipment in our fitness center. Country Club of Ocala, where the facilities are all a family would ever need. For more information, call today at 352-237-6644. That's 352-237-6644. Country Club of Ocala, proud sponsor of Monday's Gator Report and Gator Talk Thursday right here on The Source. Need a car? Need financing? Need somebody to cut through the red tape and send you rolling down the highway? Prestige Auto Sales is the place to go. Got great credit and just prefer a quality pre-owned car at a fair price from somebody you can trust? Prestige Auto Sales is the place to go. Want to avoid high pressure to feel appreciated and be able to choose from a wide selection of AutoCheck and Carfax certified vehicles? Prestige Auto Sales is the place to go. Prestige Auto Sales in Ocala and Bellevue. Prestige, it's all there in our name. If you need a sign or a banner for your yard or your business or your campaign, I'd recommend you go to Signs Unlimited at 318 South Magnolia in Ocala. Screen printing, embroidery, digital graphics, do what I did when we needed signs for the Save the Marion Theater Group. Go see Vic Buttermore at Signs Unlimited if you want quality work with a fast turnaround from somebody who is deeply committed to his community and always ready to assist you. There's a reason Vic's slogan is, it's our business to make your business better. Sign up for Signs Unlimited. Call 732-7341 today. If you want to avoid getting ripped off and put more money in your pocket, then join me, Clark Howard, every weeknight at 6, right here on WOCA, The Source. Look who just walked in the room, Joe Wiesner from What's Up Ocala. Hey, Joe, I'm looking for something to do this weekend. You got any ideas? Absolutely. Check out our event calendar online at www.whatsupocala.com, and there is plenty of events there for you. Daily news updates to event reviews and magazine articles. Really? We've organized it all in one place online for you to cut through all of the hassle of finding something to do this weekend. We have a daily event calendar, a bi-monthly magazine, and we also do daily news articles. All right, Joe, that's perfect. Thanks so much. Yeah. What's up, Ocala.com. 
This is Don with ABC Frederick's Appliance. Here's my daughter, Lena. And hey, everybody, it's Lena. You need to come down to ABC Frederick's Appliance on County Road 25, just over the railroad tracks in Bellevue, where you are treated right with the right products, like Whirlpool, Maytag, Crosley, and Speed Queen. These are the new ones. Don't forget, we also carry used appliances that we warranty. ABC Frederick's Appliance does repairs, too. Call us at 629-5181. ABC Frederick's Appliance on County Road 25, just over the railroad tracks in Bellevue. It's at 629-5181. Hey, Matt, I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we, we do that, I need too. my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that, too. I need a new roof line, a new spoiler, and a new yep, truck. Yep, we can even do that, too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show, too, huh? Well, as a matter of fact, join me every Monday at 10 for auto repair with personal care here on The Source. Of course you do. Call me crazy. Some people say insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. I think insanity is 1,000 single-sided, full-color business cards for 15 bucks, or packing service for 50% off. Call me crazy. <laughs> Green Street Printing, on the corner of Northeast 25th Avenue and 24th Street, 789-6683. That's 789-6683. Look for the yellow signs. Hello? Can you hear me? Because if you can, then so can your customers. Radio works. Call today to advertise your business right here on WOCA 1370, The Source. You're listening to WOCA, Ocala. I'm Buddy Martin. We're at the Gateway Bank. We go out now to um, where the Final Four of the Junior College Championship will be played this weekend, and the CF Patriots are in it, a chance to win it all. Tonight they have their next uh, big game against Spartanburg Methodist as the last night uh, CF Trump triumph to move forward uh, at the Final Four. And with, uh, with us on the phone now is the head coach of the Patriots, Tim Bryan, congratulations, Coach. Thank you very much, buddy. Appreciate it. Tell us, first of all, about last night's game and uh, how that went. You had a couple of big performances last night. Yeah, you know, it was an um, uh, intense game. Uh, we played a very good team out of Central Arizona. They were 30-4, and four, I believe. Um, they, won their, uh, they won their region. Um, very quick team. Uh, they have a point guard that's uh, been offered by UCLA, Washington State, you know, high major kid, uh, a bunch of kids that could really shoot it. Um, however, they didn't have the size and the size uh, to match up with us inside. And in the beginning of the game, um, in the early into the second half, their speed was, was uh, really getting to us. We could not keep up with their speed. Um, but we made some adjustments and um, were able to put them into a half-court game. And once we got into a half-court game, we kind of controlled the game after that, uh, which was about maybe the 12-minute mark in the second half. You've talked about Eugene McCrory a lot this year. Of course, you got good balance. But last night it was a breakout game for McCrory as he scores 29 points, a big uh, second half. And uh, what a night he had. Yeah, he had, he had a great 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 game last night um you know it was it was uh an incredible performance by him uh he got uh you know if we missed a shot he got the rebound he was just so powerful inside um he uh he was like a man amongst boys if you didn't get a chance to see the game you missed one great interview for he was 12 for 13 from the field well you can watch the game of course on NG's, njcc uh, dot org and tonight you play at nine o'clock I believe uh, and uh, what do you know about Spartanburg? Uh, they're good, you know. Obviously they're thirty four and zero. They're the only team in the country that's undefeated. Uh, they're thirty four and zero. Um, they have uh, a bunch of guys that can really shoot it. They play hard. They don't make mistakes. Uh, they turn it. Over. They don't turn it over very often. Um, and they're uh, you know they're quick. They're they're going to obviously be a very tough team. They're thirty four and zero. Well, your team is playing awfully well, and a lot of people are sort of getting excited about your players. Uh, it sounds like your team is peaking at the right time. Am I right, Tim? 
you know, we are, you know, right now we are, you know, we, we, we have, on the defensive side, we've just come together. It just keeps getting better on that defense side, and that's what's been winning games for us. Um, you know, obviously last night Eugene had a big night, but even last night in that second half, we played um, um, Central Arizona. They shoot 48% from the field, and last night we held them to 29% in that second half, and that was just gigantic. It speaks to the quality of the opposition and the quality of the state of Florida. They have two teams in the Final Four, Northwest Florida State, plays Vincennes in the first game, I think, tonight, and then you play, uh, you're the home team tonight against Spartanburg Methodist. You played and defeated Northwest Florida State. Talk about them. Yeah, well, you know, they're a very good team. You know, they, they were um, they were the third-ranked team coming into, you know, in, in, when the last poll, the national poll, they were the third-ranked team in the country, and we upset them in the, in the state tournament. Um, they're, they're an excellent team, but it goes a lot to say how strong the junior college basketball is in Florida for us to have two teams in the final four. Um, you know, it's, it's just, uh, they, we could have three or four teams from our state in this tournament. It, it's, it's, the region is just that strong. Now, Tim, talk about your strategy tonight. Give us a little inside look at this, the, the, what we can watch for tonight. Uh, would you play Spartanburg Methodist? Or you well, gonna... our, our strategy doesn't change. Our strategy is we got to get that ball inside. We, we're so good inside. And one commentator last night during the game um, said that uh, they haven't seen a, a team this powerful inside in a long, long time out here. Um, we have um, that, that's our bread and butter, and we know it. And we've got it. We we have to make that work. They're going to try to keep us out of that paint, um, but we we got to attack that. And then on the defensive side, we just have to play solid. We've got to be able to get to those shooters. Uh, they got a couple of kids that like to drive, and we need to know the personnel and recognize it. Um, and then uh, you know do a great job off the boards, which we've been doing. Of course, you have Rasham Soares and taking care of the basketball, which always is important to the turnovers. You don't need those. Uh, it sounds like I'm hearing a little excitement in your voice. Uh, can you repeat that? I'm uh, it sounds like I'm hearing some excitement in your voice right now. You're just a oh, couple of well, steps away. <laughs> We're getting ready. I mean, it's just a big game. We're in Final Four. You know, it's just... This is it, and um, uh, I think everybody, all of our guys are excited. You know, we're ready to go. We want, we want to win this thing. What was your first experience? Have you ever been this deep in the tournament before? I'm sorry, could you repeat Have you ever been as deep in the tournament this four with any team before? Or is this your first trip to the Final Four? This is the first. You know, I, I have been at, I have won two, I won a national championship actually at an AAU level, uh, but nothing like this. And, and I've been in another um Championship game. Well, I lost a championship game in an AAU uh, national tournament, but this is you know, this is a whole different level. I mean, it's it's, it's uh, you know competition, everything. I mean, it's, it's it's very exciting. Well, I tell you, you've done a fantastic job. It's been a great story to follow. We'll be following the Patriots tonight. Wish you all the best. And if you get past this one, well, there's the next one, and that's for that's for all the marbles. But good luck tonight, Tim. Thank you. Just a reminder, the game is on, going to be played. Um, they are showing it over down at Gator Dockside at 9 o'clock. Yes, they are. And you can also log on and see it on your, if you want to go with the Patriot fans, go to Gator's Dockside tonight. If you can't go, be sure you just log on to the website, and we'll keep reminding folks how to watch it. Good luck, Tim. Thanks a lot, buddy. Appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. All right. Good story, and uh, who who would have known? Who would ever figured that there'd be a possible national champion? Another one. We seem to have a run on these things lately, you know. <laughs> Stuff like this happens. It's a good story, and one that uh, I'll be watching tonight, and following as well. Meanwhile, we'll keep you up to date, JJ. Uh, there's no more finals that I know of other than what we just gave everybody. Uh, and uh, of course, Creighton ended up winning 67-63. Yeah, there is one more final. Uh, and LaSalle, of course, beat Kansas. State. Yeah, we didn't say that. LaSalle beat okay. Kansas State by. Two, I believe. It was uh, very, very four. close at the four end. Point. Four points. Yeah. Four, all right. No, uh, they beat no. them 63-60. No, I'm, you're right. It was two. Cincinnati lost by four, and uh, and, and Kansas State lost by Which Cincinnati by needed. They had a chance to tie the game on a three, rimmed out at the end, so that's why they had to foul them. But very close games the last two. Yeah, tonight will be interesting to watch some things that go on. Uh, I know that they, they haven't got much of a chance, but who knows? We've had some strange things happen. We've got the Florida Gulf Coast playing Georgetown tonight, actually, here in a few minutes at 6.50. And then Iona plays uh, Ohio State and Villanova versus UNC, Tom's, uh, uh, Tom's team, the Tar Heels. So uh, tonight we're watching that. I'll be watching basketball and flicking over to NGC, NJC, right? NJCAA.org. NJCAA.org. And watching the Patriots at 9 o'clock. So all that going on. 
Let's go ahead and take a break uh, and see if we can get up with our man, Joe Williams. And we'll talk a little more hoop with you, finish up today right here uh, on Buddy's Sports page. And listen to us on 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, WOCA, The Source. Hi, this is Buddy Martin. If you have an award or a trophy in your house, there's more than a good chance it came from BJ Trophies Gifts and Awards. At BJ Trophies, Floyd Hershberger and his staff have a lot more than just trophies. Among the items they specialize in are donor recognition walls and trees, personalized or engraved gifts, cast bronze dedication plaques, wide format digital printing with posters, banners, and signs, and promotional products. Floyd is the official trophy and awards maker for the Voice of Ocala radio show and is North Central Florida's leader in custom recognition programs, corporate awards, industrial engraving, unique gifts, and advertising specialties. When Angie Lewis went shopping for something to award to the winners of her State Farm Good Neighbor Award, she shopped first at BJ Trophies Awards and Gifts. Check them out at 1735 Northeast Jacksonville Road on North Magnolia's Miracle Mile or call them today at 352-732-2249. BJ Trophies Awards and Gifts. Trophies is just our middle name. Hi, I'm Lisa Midget with Kinetic Motion Fitness, Ocala's premier small group and personal training fitness studio. Did you know you can achieve all your fitness goals, whether that's losing weight, getting fit, or training for a personal best, all with no membership fees? Have you ever been embarrassed or intimidated at a big gym because you're not a Greek god or a size zero supermodel? Have you ever felt like your gym would rather you not even show up? At KMF, we have a team approach that focuses on small classes and personal training, and you'll feel like family, not just another number. No more boring treadmills or endless reps. Our classes are fun, energetic, and get you the results you want. And I should know, with the help of our great trainers, I lost over 100 pounds in eight jean sizes, and I did it using no heavy equipment and no magic pills, just fun and effective workouts. And yes, I did say fun. Come join us at KMF. Visit our website at kmfocala.com or like us on Facebook. Again, that was kmfocala.com. Well, the new year is upon us, and that means getting to those forgotten projects that you promised you would. So whether you're tackling a small honeydew list or building the Taj Mahal, Sunbelt Rentals will help you get the job done right with the right tools. From carpet cleaners to excavators, Sunbelt Rentals has what you need. So what are you waiting for? Get it done. Rent it now. From Sunbelt Rentals, located on Highway 27, just a half mile east of I-75, or visit sunbeltrentals.com. Get it done. Rent it now. Sunbelt Rentals. They've served our country. They've kept us free. And they need your help. We're sitting in Veterans Park. You can't sit here not realizing that you're surrounded by heroes. There are a lot of heroes in our community. A lot of heroes, unfortunately, are not in good financial shape. They're hurting both physically and financially. We step in and help directly. Our role is to reach out to them. We're there to help the veteran. We do counseling. We do outreach. Sometimes it's just coming into the office and sitting down and saying, hey, I've got a problem. And you're talking to another veteran who understands that problem. Everybody who works for the Vets Helping Vets are awesome. And they are so kind to everybody. They're like my second family. They really are. They have been there during the holidays. I have gotten unexpected visits, assistance. Vets Helping Vets of Marion County needs your help. Call today, 352-433-2320 and pledge your support to Vets Helping Vets of Marion County. It really has been a blessing. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Life jackets save lives. Wear it, Florida. A shower or thunderstorm in spots for this evening. Otherwise, partly too mostly cloudy skies. Not as chilly. Tonight's low 62 to 67. Periods of clouds and sunny skies. The shower or a thunderstorm around. A bit breezy. High 83 to 87 Saturday. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Michael Stack. Welcome back to the program. Time now to go out and visit uh, the mayor of Brackettville out in Denver. All i got to say is he's presiding over a mess if he's the mayor of Brackettville because there's a bunch of them out there, including mine already. Joe Williams from Mile High Sports joins us. Joe, is it as bad there in your brackets as it is in mine? Well, uh, my, my results have been mixed, to say the least, in the early going. Of course, uh, obviously you want to salvage your final four teams. 
and I've still got my final four teams alive. I'm not one of those who bought into the New Mexico myth. Tom. Uh, thank goodness. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, there have been a couple of games that surprised me. I did have Davidson, a 14, beating number three Marquette. And as far as I'm concerned, they won the game, but they're not going <laughs> to give it to me on the bracket, they told me. Well, uh, that's good, Joe. Though. Davidson blew that match. Yes, they sure did. Yeah. Uh, I think you had Pittsburgh, too, didn't you? I had Pitt. Yeah. Uh, uh, I had Pitt, which... Uh, I yeah. don't know why I did that. Yeah, I don't either. They, I they have the a thing. history of going out in the first round and losing to uh, uh, lesser, although that was an 8-9 game. So it wasn't really an upset. But uh, I missed on Pitt. I also took a shot at Belmont against Arizona. No, no, I got That did that. not come true. One of the few I got and, right. And uh, the rest of the way, I'm, uh, I'm looking pretty good after that. Yeah, I'm oh, sure. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oklahoma State. Another one. Uh, I took yeah. Oklahoma State over Oregon. Yeah. And uh, 12th seed in Oregon, as we know, knocked off number five Oklahoma. I can't figure out the Pac-12. Uh, the league is not worth a damn. I watch it all year long. And uh, Colorado, <laughs> of course, getting cleaned today by yeah. Illinois, which does not surprise me in the least. But uh, you know what? It's uh, not called March Reasonable. It's called March Madness. <laughs> How far did you have Kansas State going, Joe? Uh, Kansas State, I had Kansas State knocked out by Wisconsin. But not by LaSalle. No, no, I had LaSalle. No, no, not by LaSalle, yeah. no. Yeah, unfortunately, you were like me. I didn't have LaSalle either. All right, so here's the deal. This is my advice to the mayor of Brackettville, and advice to myself. Don't fall in love with underdogs, okay? You fell in love with Pitt, New Mexico, maybe not so much. Oak State, you did. NC State, you kind of liked them a little bit. I did too. And we got burned on those, you know? And here's the deal, Joe. I said this earlier. Here's the system. Take a tip from Joni, okay? Joni knows how to pick these brackets. She picked Wichita State to win over Pittsburgh because that's where Rhonda's from, okay? <laughs> that works. Yeah, and then she picked Colorado State because that's where Rebecca went to school. So that's how she got her win. So maybe we need to defer to Joni <clears throat> as the mayoress of Brackettville. Well, maybe we will. Now, I had Temple over uh, NC State. Didn't have that. In that 8-9 game. And I did pick CSU last night against Missouri. All right. Well, you had a different strategy. Um, it's it's crazy right now. I don't know. I just have this feeling that we're not going to wind up with the brackets in the Final Four that we thought we would because it's just an odd year. You know, Ole Miss, I mean, Ole Miss just took it to Wisconsin. I picked Ole Miss. I saw what they did to Florida. They're good. And Henderson, you fell in love with Henderson as a shooter. Uh, you know, and this uh, for having a 12, for all the talk about the Big Ten, you just pointed this out, Wisconsin, a five, gets hammered by a 12, Mississippi. Well, yeah, I was surprised by the uh, Ole Miss-Wisconsin, too, and uh, I'm not sure about, uh, uh, you can't tell, you know, the, the Southeastern Conference was, you know, basically targeted all year. They said nobody mm -hmm. was any good in that conference. I've got Florida. Uh, in my final four uh, on my bracket, along with Indiana. And on the other side, I've got St. Louis knocking off Louisville in the Sweet 16 and advancing to Atlanta. And the bottom half of that uh, final four is Ohio State. So i got St. Louis, Ohio State, Florida, and Indiana, which, as far as I'm concerned, is a winner right now as we uh, go into uh, round number two starting tomorrow. Lisa's Miami not, looks uh, strong, Joe. Lisa's not a loser. I know, but I like Indiana better, so out of that end of the bracket. Let me tell you about two teams you overlook. VCU is one. Also, Miami is really good. Well, I understand Miami's really good. Maybe you haven't seen Indiana. So are they. <laughs> well, we'll see. Yeah, I, so think, I think Miami's the second best team in the tournament, but they're the second best team in their bracket, too. Yeah, I've got VCU uh, going to the uh, regional finals in the South region against Florida and losing to Florida. Hmm. Uh, I've got VCU knocking off Kansas in the regional semifinals, and uh, I've got the uh, Gators knocking off VCU uh, to advance to Atlanta. Hmm. Who's the best player you've seen so far in all the games you played that you've seen play today, yesterday? Well, today I haven't. Had, I had to go to work, so no. I haven't. You know, I haven't seen. Uh, I haven't seen an awful lot. Mm -hmm. Anybody uh, strike your fancy at all that you've seen so far in the tournament? I'm sorry? Anybody strike your fancy in particular that you've seen? Uh, no, not really. Yeah. There's nobody that jumps out at me. Yeah. Uh, I've watched a lot of college basketball this year, and mm -hmm. 
Uh, I can tell you some players that I don't think played very good. Colorado's got a couple of them right now today. <laughs> You're a better man. The yeah. Buffaloes, yeah. <clears throat> uh, let's talk about uh, let's talk about uh, uh, the Kansas Jayhawks. Some people okay. are all over of them, and they think may, perhaps they may be a sleeper. They play uh, uh, who, they, who they got in that nine of fifty game. Uh, who's WK? Western Kentucky. Western Kentucky. Uh, Kansas, one first of all, is seated. They're a top seed, so they're not a sleeper. Okay. They're seated. They're, they they got a number one seed, so they're far from a. Seed. Well, a sleeper to win the championship. I'm saying. I don't mean to, to advance. Obviously, I mean I, I don't like them to win the championship. Buddy, let me give you a, let me give you the definition of a sleeper. Okay, Not the Mayor Brackenville speaker. I've go got St. Louis to go to the final four. Yeah. That's a sleeper. They're yeah. they're a four seed. They're twenty seven to six coming out of the A ten, which by the way is six and zero so far in the tournament. And, and buddy, Mayor I've Ken seen. Looks I've seen so many people pick Kansas to win the national title this year. That's buddy. my point. Well, that's, that's a, not a sleeper. No, 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 no. Let me rephrase the question. A lot of people are picking them to win the national championship. Okay, I don't even know if they'll get to the final four. That's my point. They were twenty nine. I don't think they're going to. Now, they were twenty nine and five on the season. They're inconsistent. Who was it? Wasn't that long ago where the coach was talking about maybe the worst looking yeah. game he's seen? They lost at TCU. Yeah, they thought the worst looking game he's seen since they had Peach Baskets. You know, <laughs> and, yeah. and, and, what and Kansas Lawrence. has going for them? They've got four seniors and they got one great freshman, and uh, they've got a kid that's a big kid who can play uh, with him. But Kansas, we'll find out about Kansas. Uh, I think they'll beat the Hilltoppers. Let's not get carried away there. <laughs> of course, uh, well, don't go out on a limb there. They'll probably they'll win. Whoever wins between North Carolina and Villanova, Kansas will win that game. Where Kansas is liable to run into trouble, and where I've got them uh, getting beat is by Virginia and Commonwealth. That's where I think they're going to run into trouble. Well, I think you're right. I think Virginia Commonwealth is a better basketball team than Kansas, based so, on what I've seen. So. Uh, and, and they don't have to be a better team. They just have to have a better day that one That's time correct. they play them. The team that gets hot. Speaking of teams getting hot, how about those Denver Nuggets? Yeah, we haven't seen anything like that out here ever. Yeah. You know, a winning streak like this. And, uh, of course, the town's all excited. And, you know, they're making their uh, plans to uh, watch them play the Heat in the NBA Finals. You know how it is out here in Denver. <laughs> People are not very sophisticated. And, <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> but, uh, the, nevertheless, the Nuggets have had a good run. And they'll be fine until they get in the playoffs where everything slows down to a halt. You know, and uh, uh, the offenses move at a pace, uh, at a turtle's pace, and the Nuggets don't have anybody who can stick 25-foot jump shots. Well, that's how about that'll God. be their Waterloo. But, yeah. you know, there's a reg- as we all know, all you guys know, Tom, J.J., Buddy, everybody knows there's two seasons in the NBA. There's the regular season, and then there's the playoffs. No. And what happens in the regular season doesn't really have anything to do with what's going to happen in the playoffs. Nobody can ruin a 14-game win streak like Joe can, buddy. Exactly. <laughs> he can rain on your parade. Hey, how about my man Corey Brewer, a little love for the former Gator Joe last night? Yeah, he's played well here. He's a very uh, very popular player here, and uh, he's done a very good job and uh, has turned into an excellent pro. Yeah, Andre Miller had a big night. You miss the Birdman out there, don't you? I don't miss him, no. I think he's strange. <laughs> Why would you say that? Because he has tats all over his body. That's not the only reason I know him. <laughs> you hanging with you hanging with Anderson, huh? Chris no, Anderson. I don't hang with him. I uh, just know him. Yeah, yeah. Well, all right. So you buckle in for the weekend. You're ready to see some hoop, uh, and uh, we'll see if your final four turns out any better than mine. Mine's not looking looking okay. I've got Miami winning it all, by the way. Just in case, just so you don't think I'm a, I'm pro Gator. I'm not willing to take a shot. I have the Hurricanes. Uh, pick a winning good championship, and JJ says, "Don't jinx him. He's mad because I picked him." Well, I don't think Miami's going to win it, but uh, I think they'll uh, make a nice little run, and I think they will get to the uh, regional finals, and uh, they'll uh, lose to the Indiana Hoosiers. Yeah, Joe, have you right. seen? Have you seen Larkin? Have you seen Kenny Kaji? Have you seen these guys? I mean, Larkin's the well, ACC yes, Player of the Year. Have you seen Victor Oladipo? Have you seen? Uh, Cody Zeller, have you seen Christian Watford? Of course I've seen him. Just think about this. Kenny Kaji was on the roster of the Gators. Imagine him on this team now, had he still been there, what that team would be like. Uh, Kenny Kaji was on the Gators? Yes, he was. He transferred. I didn't know that. Yes, he was. So, uh, and Boy, speaking, they could use him now. Oh, could, could they, they ever? And then, of course, just like... Uh, they, what happened? Did he get arrested? No. He actually just transferred. He left because he wasn't getting much playing time. 
Oh, okay. So, uh, you think God, the Gators kick people off teams for getting arrested, Joe? Uh, the oh, Hurricanes don't it, for sure. <laughs> so, uh, you know, J.J.'s a little cocky now. He wasn't saying much about Miami until about three weeks hey, ago. Hey, that was a big win today. Yeah, he's a Massive little cocky win. now. He, he, well, yeah. I'll, tell you, I'll tell you one thing. It shows you the wonders of coaching because this is Frank Haith's team. Correct. And Frank Haith had all these players. They didn't do squat with them. Mm-hmm. And uh, you get a coach in there like Larinaga, he comes in there, and you look at what he's done, it sure means a lot, doesn't it? it, it there's a big difference. Yeah. All right, Headman. Sounds great. Have a great weekend. I'll call you over the weekend, okay? All right, boys. Thank you, Joe. All right. want to thank Joe Williams, also Coach Tim Ryan, Tom Schmitz down in, with Hunter down at the 